I can honestly say this one was YouTube's fault. I've double checked and it was, but we're good on a new stream key and RMTP server. So here we go. The first episode that was already going so well. Welcome to this. And then that happens. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Welcome to Skeptalk. Shit. Hey. Welcome to the second uh, first this... show of Skeptalk. <laughs> I don't yes, even think. Yes, yes. I think I'm all Double like premiere. flustered. I'm all flustered because we had that shit. And then the rest of the intro didn't even play. Hang on. <laughs> we have to show. We're going to rewind it. I, I, I did too much work to oh, allow do this. It. Do it again. Fuck you, Start YouTube. It over. Do it again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. That's how it was supposed to look. Hey, hey. hey welcome, welcome to, to the third Talk. first show of Skip. I'm, I'm glad you're here. It's the re re relaunch <laughs> of the premiere of the of the first time that we've ever done this. I'm gonna it's go jump Skeptalk, in the ocean. Y'all. Yeah, I can. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, hey, welcome to Skip Talk. Um, in case you've been watching for the past 19 minutes, you haven't been uh, because we, <laughs> no, we had an issue with it with. Right, exactly. We we had a glitch. It was it was on YouTube's side, unfortunately, and and so we just had to regenerate the stream key and all the other tech things that I don't understand. Um, so we had already been taking calls and had to shove people back in the queue, and we're yes. gonna start over from scratch. So hi, I'm Forrest, and welcome hi. to Skep Talk. I'm joined by the marvelous Shannon Q. How are you today, Shannon? Tell I me am for the first still time. doing very well. <laughs> hey, I'm still very Wonderful. excited. I'm, I might be more excited now. <laughs> we, get, right. we, get, we get a redo. We get, and very few people yeah, in life get, get a redo. We get a redo. We get to start right <laughs> from jump. Completely start from scratch. <laughs> um, so we... Uh, uh, just really quick, let me introduce everybody once again uh, for the first time to what we're doing here. This is Skep Talk. It's a new show from the Line Network put together by the marvelous Jimmy Snow. Um, it's, uh, it's a different kind of show than the usual just atheist call-in shows because on this show, we've got people who definitely don't want to be called experts, but are, are certainly like, you know, in their field more than most. Um, and uh, you can call into different shows in different weeks and talk to different people and ask different kinds of questions. Um, we've got uh, uh, me, I'm a, I'm a biologist. I mainly specialize in evolution and bioanthropology. Uh, and, and my goal is to help people understand the science that so many theists uh, don't like to talk about. I'm trying so hard to recap everything that we talked about in as short a time as possible. Um, speed, level can speed run it. <laughs> right? Uh, gosh. Um, uh, I, I, I try hard to make people understand uh, science and, and actually like help people learn to love science and themselves and get people as excited about the universe as I am. I'm also a very proud and outspoken anti-theist. Uh, and so I'm happy to talk about how religion is not only incorrect, but also harmful and corrosive and to help people free themselves from the chains of, of religious thinking uh, and, and aid them in their deconstruction. That's a huge passion of mine. And so this is just a wonderful thing uh, uh, to, for me. Um, we also talked about a few other things, but I want Shannon, will you please tell us uh, who you are and, and, and introduce us to your work as well? Well, I am Shannon Q. Uh, people may have seen me on the line before or on my own channel. It's just called Shannon Q or any other atheist YouTube channel ever. I've probably been on most, if not all of the ones that you may re that you may readily recognize. Um, I, I am here on this show because I have a degree in psychology and am uh, somebody who's exceptionally passionate about neuroscience. And when I did my degree, my focus was on perceptual cognition and communication theory. And I have a distinct passion for what I like to call elevating the discourse and having better versions of complex conversations. And this is a unique platform where I'm going to be able to kind of enact that, uh, in my own way, on my own terms, with some other people who are like-minded. So Skeptalk is going to be somewhere where there's going to be people who are kind of experts in their field, have above average acumen in specific fields, who are going to be having, hopefully, 
we'll, we'll try. Like I said before, you didn't hear it, but I said I do, in fact, have a bitch switch, and you'll probably see it at least once. <laughs> Hopefully yeah, not today, absolutely. but for the if most part, I really am looking forward to having, you know, better versions of conversations about uh, faith and uh, where people differ from me and are diametrically opposed from me. And I'm looking forward to talking to you guys when you call in and we'll also be reading any super chats that are over $5. So this also gives me and other hosts like Forrest and next week we'll have Aaron Ra, who's going to be a re reoccurring host, who's also, and like, if you want to talk to call about Cladist call in and talk about cladistics that's that's your man right there that's the guy yeah. <laughs> that is that yeah. is the man to it, do girl. it with so it'll give people who aren't maybe interested in calling in an opportunity to ask people that they've they've seen and see kind of as a bit more having a higher degree of expertise in their fields some specific questions pertaining to to what you might want as an audience member even if you aren't a caller so keep that in mind as well yeah. and tomorrow what's the name of the show that's on tomorrow for us is another new show on the We've line got yeah, we've got another new show tomorrow called Hostility, uh, which will also be hosted by a variety of different people, um, which is more of a, a, you know, bringing in different people from different uh, professions, different industries, different ideologies and whatnot to help people deconstruct religious thinking and ideologies. Um, and so I believe tomorrow uh, uh, Jimmy's going to be hosting um, with a, a certified sex coach, uh, and they're going to be talking about, like, every awesome thing that she does and understands and the way that she sees the world. I know that's going to help a lot with people who are trying to, you know, get out of purity culture and like come to terms with just mm. their own sexuality. It's going to be huge. Um, also, by the by, uh, if you'd like to support this whole channel and all the things that this channel does, including this and many other shows, uh, you can support individual shows or the channel at large by becoming a member. Uh, the channel also has a Patreon. That's patreon.com slash call the line, which will get you into the exclusive Discord and just enable them to you know, make more amazing stuff, including the podcast form of everything, which is apparently very highly requested. Um, that's something that Jimmy is currently trying to put together now. Yeah. So, so become a member, become a patron, help out however you can, and we can make those things happen because we live in a capitalist hellscape and we need money to survive. Um, <laughs> with that, true, true. Uh, you know, we, we uh, just try to compress... We try to compress the whole intro there. Um, if if you have more questions about who we are or what we do, you know, both of us just kind of rambled through in in five minutes what took us like ten to fifteen minutes to get through the first time. So uh, if you have more questions about us, you want to talk more to us about us, whatever, call in. The lines are open. We've already got a few sure. on the hold, including one person who yeah. already got to talk to us for a minute, and then we had to just, just shut up and reset him. Um, so you know, but there are still a few open spots. So if you want to call in and you want to talk about you know my field of biology or shannon's field of psychology or atheism in general we would absolutely love to talk to you especially if you're a theist and you want to talk about how yes. you know you don't understand ev how evolution is real or or radiometric dating or about the psychology of of, of deconstruction or about you know the the soul. the soul if you want to talk about <laughs> soul um if you want to talk about sex and gender, that's a big one that I'm having to talk about mm. more and more and more right now because a lot of people think that those are the same thing biologically and that they're all binary and that doesn't make any sense. Um, but uh, yeah, a, a lot of the problems that we have with people not understanding science is that you know we oversimplify things in middle school and then people stop listening after that. So like, we're here to help. We're here to give you the things that we have degrees in and and and, and talk to you about it. Uh, and not we, I promise, we'll be nice most of the time. So call in. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> With that, did we cover everything? Did we, did we, we get everything crammed in there? That's the big voice in the sky. Did we, did we hit all of the high points? Big voice in the sky. Are we good. Yeah. We'll make did it we up to everyone by going until midnight. I'm just kidding. I just said that to <laughs> annoy Shannon. Here we go. I'm old and I have a job. <laughs> Same. Right. Sweet. Okay, cool. So we'll jump into calls. And if we if we remember anything that we missed, because like I say, this is this is the, the second or third time we've had to try to cram this in. If we remember anything, we'll just pop it in later on. We'll try to squeeze it into the show. What a wonderful first episode. Uh, it, it, I, I it. said last time that it'll either be really yeah. good or really weird. And it turns out we landed on really oh. weird. All right, so That's now, the tagline for the channel. <laughs> it's either really good or really weird. Uh, yeah. We're going to jump back in with Clarence from Ohio, yes, who's an atheist who is calling about the psychology of deconversion as it relates to goals for the atheist community. And you were saying something that we really wanted to talk about that was really good. Clarence, hi again. Will you please reiterate what you were talking about before so we can, can jump into what you were talking about? 
Um, Hello again, Claire. You're, you're, Forrest, you're breaking up a little bit. Um, oh, sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you just fine. Okay, that's a little better. Um, well, um, uh, as, as we were talking, um, uh, uh, I mean, Forrest and, and Shannon both clarified for me that uh, um, their positions on uh, secular humanism is uh, um, with regard to the fact that uh, it, it provides a set of values and morals that they did not feel they knew enough about um, and so weren't comfortable identifying as that without knowing more, but that there was probably close to a one-to-one -one correspondence. And so yeah, um, where I'm going with, I'm sorry? I said that's a fair summation yep. of the conversation that, that okay. only you're, you you're got to <laughs> <laughs> You got a special VIP um, seat. Right. Okay. I, I'm still having a little trouble. You're, you're, you're breaking up a little bit, but I, I just heard you now. Um, so basically where I'm, I'm going with this is that um, uh, I feel that then when people deconvert, um, that atheism, because it's just one issue, which is lack of belief in God, um, people often feel the need to replace things uh, that they had with religion that they no longer have, such as as sense of community and sense of security and, and uh, a value system and everything. And a lot of times, if they don't have that, they can end up getting involved in um, a kind of a belief systems that are just as uh, bad or even worse than religion. So um, my thought is that um, presenting atheism as just atheism kind of leaves that wide open, whereas if uh, by presenting secular humanism, um, you are kind of provide, you can provide more of a kind of a landing space for them instead of just a void. Um, another aspect of this is that I'm, I'm noticing that a lot of people that um, uh, deconvert, uh, I, I, you might remember this, I was talking to you previously on another program about um, um, my concern about uh, angry atheists. And mm -hmm. um, I got some feedback on that from some friends and um, I think I'd like to revise that wording, because by saying angry atheist, I, I, that applies to almost all atheists, including myself. And what I was really talking about was not really angry atheists, but a, a, atheists that are angry to the point of being toxic. So I think toxic is a more accurate word because it, it, it doesn't include everybody doesn't feel like they're included. Yeah, and also <laughs> some people have a right to be um, angry. Some anger is justified yeah, when it comes to deconversion. Yeah. Oh, sure. I, I'd argue I a agree. lot of it is. I agree 100%. Yeah. I agree yeah. 100%. Yeah. So what I'm talking about when I say toxic... I'm sorry, go ahead, Forrest. Oh, I was just going to say, you, you, you've you touched on two really good things here that, that are really important, and I want to you know jump into them as much as we can. Because, um, like... Number one, as far as, you know, atheists or people becoming atheists and then landing in some weird, you know, their, you know hateful ideology, conspiracy theory, whatever other mm -hmm. thing. This is actually something that Shannon and I have talked about on, on her show a little while ago yeah. um, was that, you know, it you have somebody who's coming from a dogmatic worldview, believing that they that you cannot question this authority. And then when they finally do and it all falls apart. Well, now, if I can ask a question of anything, it might just fall apart. And so if I can ask a question of, you know, is the government some secret conspiracy of lizard people? That's a question I can ask, which means maybe it actually is. And like, they don't have the, the, the you know, I wouldn't say the capacity, but they don't have the tools in their tool belt to mm. actually do real skeptical and critical thinking. Um, and so they, they fall victim to that sort of thing quite a bit. Was that? I would also, I, I just exactly. wanted to interject because I think like when it comes to you saying like basically you can like slip secular humanism into that void, I don't even know that that's necessarily the answer because unless you teach people how to construct better epistemological frameworks, you're just swapping like for like, right? You're just saying, okay, well, you, no. you were dogmatic about this and took it on faith and now you can be dogmatic about this and take it on faith. I think the best way to transition people out of negative dogmatic beliefs belief systems that had a detrimental impact to them is to teach them better, like better epistemology, like how to think better, 
how to approach things like, better, how to research things better, how to approach, like how to approach problems and solve them. And, you know, like th those are the tools that need to go in the toolkit, like to go back to what Forrest was saying, just saying, okay, well, you don't believe this anymore. Let's see what we can do to shift you over here. Isn't I, it, that's just swapping like for like to me. Like you are, you're not making them any better for themselves. You're just saying, okay, well, it would be better for you if you landed here and better for society if you landed here, but they're not going to stay there if they can still be led astray by, you know, some, somebody, you know, using coercive tactics because they're still susceptible because they don't have strong Precisely. epistemology. Like you're, you're not making them any less vulnerable or susceptible to the same type of thing happening again. You're just saying, okay, well, maybe this would work better. Try this. Like education is an answer. Well, that, <laughs> education that, is almost yeah, always absolutely. the answer well, in, in communication. Absolutely, because otherwise you're not you're not doing deconstruction. You're doing conversion. And like now, right. you know, if 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 somebody comes out and says, "Well, I'm a secular humanist, and so are you," and also, you know, I don't like gays or whatever, you know, whatever the next thing is. <laughs> now, all of a sudden, you have the same herd mentality. You have the same group think. You have the same desire to conform. You have the same all of these mm. things. So, like, I, I think the 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 better thing to do, like as Shannon was just saying, is just just you know, asking these questions and giving them the tools to to actually like critically analyze things. And also, I think the main thing, rather than spreading atheism, so to speak, is teaching skepticism. Um, is is you know teaching mm. you know ask questions all the time, question everything, uh, and 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 never be afraid to do that because if something is true and reasonable and justifiable, it'll stand up to that question. You know, if if you ask right. me why racism is bad, I'm not going to tell you. Well, I've just always heard that it is. I've sat down and thought about it for a long time, and I can come up with like. You know, historical answers and like societal implications and what happens in the short term and what happens in the long term and how it affects like there's a whole conversation there rather than just I learned it was bad so it's bad and so getting out of you know if I was coming from a, some sort of white supremacist framework into free thought I would need skepticism there as well if I was coming out of you know a, a misogynistic framework into free thought I would need some actual you know critical thinking there as well it's the, no different with anything else so you know with religion or whatever any kind of like dogmatic corrupting you know restraining ideology that's very restrictive and locks you into one way of thinking when you come out of that into free thought um you need to question everything even the things that are good and and you will come to the same conclusions as all the other you know good people I would say yeah, and if there was something else you made, said, well, maybe the end of that road too. It, but that it, it maybe so, just, it may just quickly, be. and then I think, yeah, it, like it could be. Like I don't like I legitimately have no idea. It could be the end of that road. But the most important thing is, I think, arming people with those tools. Because if if that is the case, then people will organically land there. That's where they'll organically yeah. land. They'll either have like a one for yeah. one overlap, and they'll have gone gotten to it themselves organically. Or they'll be led towards it because their journey through becoming better truth seekers and building better frameworks for interacting with the world led them in that direction. Yep. And, um, and the other had, thing you, you talked about thing. was people being the other thing you talked Toxic. about was people being angry and just very quickly, yeah, we can absolutely like atheists are not a monolith we can absolutely be just to talk to anybody but i think shannon hit the nail on the head when she said a lot of us have a reason to be angry because you came out of this incredibly abusive and, and and patronizing and toxic environment and now learning that you have been lied to for a very long time and that you actually can live a good life and be a good person without you know this this nanny cam on at all times and that you know sin isn't a real thing and you having emotions and feelings is actually totally normal and having that freedom uh, you know, you can have a lot of backlash within yourself and be freaking furious that that was repressed for so long. And you want to go to every church and bang on the doors and scream, this isn't real. Um, I think it's a testament to, to the atheists out there that don't do that. It is, it is a, 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 a beautiful display of patience and compassion and, and tolerance and temperance, uh, that we don't do that because when you see these things, the way that, you know, at least I can say, I certainly do, um, it's, it's, it's difficult. It's difficult to not want to go rush in and save people from the burning building. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, as, well, as that, that's why I wanted. That sounds. Uh, that's why I wanted to differentiate between um, uh, what I originally said I called angry atheists and toxic atheists, because as you said, mm -hmm. there are a lot of people yes. that have very good reason to be angry. Um, 
But what I'm talking about when I say toxic atheist is, uh, you know, Shannon was talk about, talking about dogmatism. And what I'm mm-hmm. seeing is a lot of atheists that, that convert to atheism, they don't replace it with anything, and they become dogmatic about atheist, atheism. And they absolutely, you know, they talk like um, the dividing line that they make between good, quote, good people and bad people is the same line as occurs between atheists and theists. Whereas where I draw the line between, you know, what you might call good people and bad people is perpendicular to that line. I think there are um, there are uh, there are good theists and there are toxic theists. There are good atheists and toxic atheists, and I'll take a, a a a good theist who's not dogmatic and trying to you know force the, their beliefs down everybody's throat over a toxic atheist any day. Um, and yeah, and what I'm seeing. And what I'm I don't think you're going to find any disagreement important. here. <laughs> like, I have theists who are my closest friends and family members who I love with my whole heart. And I've met atheists who I'd like to drive through a brick wall head first. Like, that's just, <laughs> yep. that's just people yep. being people, right? <laughs> and and so I see kind of a relationship between, um, uh, I, I guess we differ in that I see a relationship between not replacing um, uh, a religion with another value system and these people who therefore as a result of that lack become toxic atheists and and i you know so as far as goals of the atheist community i think one goal of the atheist community should be to combat and work against Toxic atheism. Uh, I, I mean, would you agree I, I with think that? I do. I, well, I, I'm hey. guessing you're not familiar with my channel very much because the pinned video oh, on my I channel am, I'm, is I'm, literally I'm, 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 literally I'm, I'm, says I'm, I'm, "stop calling religion a mental illness," and it's an hour long yeah. video with citations where I admonish people who do the, these very things. So, yeah. but, but no, but yeah, where I'm, I am going to talk about you. But where I'm going to disagree with right. you slightly like though is that like. It's not my job or anybody's job to instill a moral, like, to, to say, like, you should belong to this moral framework. Like, that's it, not only not my job, but it's an ineffective strategy. And the people that you're talking about who you you perceive as being toxic, they're kind of, like, had what what a friend of mine refers to as latent christianity is so like where you where you give away all of the beliefs like you get rid of all the beliefs in god but you still keep all of like the the poor like vestiges of how you perceive the world through like frameworks of patriarchy and you know suppression and poor power dynamics like all of that stuff still stays with you you just don't believe in god anymore i think a lot of that can go back to still having poor epistemic frameworks like you haven't updated your epistemic framework you've just said okay well the end of this epistemic framework led me to believe in god i can't hold true to that anymore i'm not going to do any more updating i'm going to stop right there I'm going to I'm now just going to figure out how to navigate the world with the same sort of perceptions I previously had on how to interact with the world only I'm going to do it without believing in God anymore because they didn't do yeah. any of that epistemic updating. So those aren't the those aren't the type of people that I'm just going to say well you should land here in secular humanism like this is a nice little place where you can be just you know rocked in and nestled right in with us and become a good person because that they have work to do before they can get there. Like it, and what what our like one of the things that I perceive my job as being like in so much as this is a job, um, is to to be a better educator, to have better conversations, to work towards showing where people differ in their mindsets, so that people may recognize that in themselves. Now, you could, I could argue, and potentially Forrest might argue, and you sounds like you would probably agree that I wish there were more people out there doing that, and less people just going, God, not real, mic drop, I'm smarter than you. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Like, yeah, I, I exactly. wish there was less of that, yeah. <laughs> for sure. But I mean, yeah. it takes yeah, all exactly. kinds. Yeah, exactly. We need all different kinds, right? Like I know people for a fact that have watched those types of content creators and that and have been like, oh shit, that was the shakeup that I needed to like really go and research this thing to prove that asshole wrong. And then, oh shit, he was right. I just didn't like the way he was right at me. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it does take yeah, all exactly, kinds, all exactly. kinds of required in my mind. Sorry, I just um, jumped all over. Can, can I just do a... 
can I give you a, just a quick example of something that I found really horrifying? And then we have a uh, bunch of calls, like yeah. a lot of calls. Okay. Say, as, as quick as you can. <laughs> okay. Just, just something that to me is a kind of an ultimate example of what I'm talking about. Um, when um, the Cathedral of Notre Dame had the fire, um, mm-hmm. that was one of the places on my bucket list that I wanted to see. And I realized when in the fire occurred that I'd never get to see it in the condition that it was in before the fire. And I bumped into somebody I knew, an acquaintance, and a, I, I, the subject came up and I said how crushed I was that I would never see, be able to see that building because the, it's a beautiful historical example of architecture and um, also uh, structural innovation. And he said, he looked at me, he got this funny look on his face. He said, I thought you were an atheist. And I said, yeah, but, you know, we're talking about an incredible piece of architecture. And his point was that because it was a church, that we should be happy that it burnt down. So I was doing, yeah, Wait, I was just literally yesterday. You were literally asking. No, no, you, no. <laughs> I, I know what you were about to say. So you say that first, because mine's related, but yours is better. I know what you're saying. Okay. So your example of why we should be better is that other people are bigoted and have biased perspectives about about who we are. So you're making it our responsibility to completely curtail how we behave, all of us on mass in the world. So that people who have an incorrect perception of us and act on that incorrect perception of us only have good examples to look at. And that is our responsibility. Otherwise, they're entitled to their bias, is what I'm hearing. And I, mm-hmm. I absolutely refuse to accept that. Well, well, That's wait, internalized I think you abuse, part of the That's story. toxic You're putting on yourself. I, 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 yeah. I, I, think you, I think you misunderstood part of the story. The guy I was talking to was an atheist. Right. The guy but still, you were like, talking that's the to. Whole thing. <laughs> that's that's still the same thing. Is that this guy was a dick and like, y- yeah, I get that he was a dick, but that doesn't play on you. Like the, to to what you were saying, I, I thought you were saying that he was a, a a religious person, but even then, like, yeah, me too. This still applies. Yesterday, I did a live stream on TikTok, which was a holiday science Q and A, and I I have a Christmas tree in my living room, and I was sitting in front of the Christmas tree in like a red robe and like being all snuggly with the Christmas lights and everything like that. And I have people pissed off, like, oh, you're an atheist. Why do you have a Christmas tree? I've gotten emails about it since. People all sorts right. of mad. Like, how dare you, Christians and atheists alike, how dare you have this Christmas tree if you're an atheist? Like, so, like, it, the, the whole thing, it, it, no matter whether this guy was atheist or not, what Shannon just said is, is absolutely spot on, is that what you're doing there to yourself is just internalizing the, the the trauma. You're internalizing the abuse of religious people saying that you need to act better. No matter how badly we act, we, we you know, that's not a true Christian. But you as an atheist need to have X, Y, Z morals and display them all the time. And if that guy said that you should be happy a church burned down because you're an atheist, that guy's a dick. Because there's still a lot of historical and cultural significance there. I would be very happy if a church closed down, but the idea of something like you know burning down and being a problem from hurting people and people losing something that matters to them, no, I, I, I'm 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 not happy yeah. about that at all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I can but enjoy we, gospel music as good music, even though I totally disagree with where it's coming from. <laughs> Uh, so so yeah. anyway, that's that's just you know my sense for the day. Yeah. Uh, 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 congratulations on the show, uh, and uh, you two are my two favorite uh, atheist Aww. talk show host. Host. Well, thank so, you so uh, much. It's very kind of you. We're I'm not trying hard enough. If I haven't ruined that for you yet, <laughs> but thank you so much, Clarence. <laughs> I, I seriously appreciate you calling in. Very very cool to talk to you. Um, with that, we have a lot of really good callers that I want to get to. Um, I'm particularly looking at number 15 right now. How do you number feel about 15. that? Yeah, sure. Let's give it. Let's I give think it that's a good transition. Cause like, mm-hmm. yeah. All right. So we're going to go for number 15. This is John pronouns. He, him calling him from Dallas. Uh, it wants to ask, why are we atheists and not agnostic? Is that a good summary of, of what you're calling for John? Or is there anything else you want to add there context wise? That's basically it. Radical. Well, you're right? on the line, man. So, so tell me, uh, do you want us to just jump right in or do you want to, do you want to 
you know, expound on it at all, or you just want us to just start talking? Uh, am I on the line? You, you are, are on, on the line, line bro. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I just want more because um, I'm, uh, I don't have a great voice. Um, I'm sorry, just my throat's a little bit sore, but because I, I don't want to have any audio issues. Uh, no, I mean, I just, that's my question. Do you want to expound on that? You can you if you want, or I can just start tearing into it because the 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 honest answer simply yeah, is that uh, the, yeah these are colloquial terms. Um, the you can get into the actual definition of these things. Atheist is the position of not believing in a god. Gnosticism is about knowledge, and so well, no. to say you can, you can be an agnostic theist. I believe there's a God, but I don't know. You can be a Gnostic theist. I know there is a God, and I believe in that. You can be a Gnostic atheist and say, I know there is no God. Or you can be an agnostic atheist. I don't believe in a God. I'm not sure. I don't have a... And like, so generally speaking, these terms are used differently in a colloquial sense. And people say agnostic is the position of, I don't, you know, kind of up in the air. I'm waiting to be convinced. And atheist means definitely there's no such thing as a God. I can tell you that's not the definition, but it doesn't matter because people are going to use it differently. There's also some people who differentiate and they say hard versus soft atheism and all these different things. Um, these are all just colloquialisms for the same thing. Long story yeah. short, I the, like the position that we certainly would be taking is agnostic atheism, which is, I don't believe there's a God. If you prove to me there is, I'll change my mind. But the example that I usually give is that, you know, if I tell you there's an elephant behind this bookshelf, you can either say, yes, there is, no, there isn't, or I don't believe you. If you say, yes, there is, or no, there isn't, you need evidence for that. But if you just say, I don't believe you, you're waiting on me to give you evidence. You're not making yeah. a true statement. You're waiting for me to back up my claims. And that's how we feel about God. We have no okay, reason so to believe in it. And I, somebody else to tell, you know? diff and I differ from Forrest. So I differ from Forrest in just oh, the, the slight way that... I am a thorn in, the, thorn in the side of people who want to call and be pedantic about these definitions because I am an atheist in the sense that you, most people are referring to in the philosophical literature when they engage mm -hmm. in these sort of arguments in order to go into pedantry about the definition of atheism. I am that definition of atheism. I do not think any god, as has been defined, is possible i think most of most if not all of the god definitions that i have been presented with are inconsistent internally nonsense impo improbable or impossible and thus i reject them all and unless and until i can be presented with one that does make sense i don't think it's possible i think it is impossible i i do i actively do not believe it is possible for a god to exist Nice. I like okay, that too. So Does that answer your question, John? Yeah, um, but now so can I expand on um, a tier comment? By all means. By all means. Okay. So, um, yeah, so I think everyone is agnostic, right? So nobody knows. I think nobody would, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, they can say that they genuinely believe, but they don't know. So in terms of everyone is to some degree agnostic it's just to what degree is your conviction but that doesn't say anything about reality because you can't know um so i mean i think everyone is an agnostic theist or agnostic atheist at heart um and that's and how strong their conviction is is just kind of subjective in their personal mind but it doesn't say anything about reality so um the reason why um i'm an agnostic theist is because um to an extent you're not talking about a hypothesis when it comes to the origin of the universe that you can really say definitively like it's a kind of a zero sum so either the universe came out of natural forces or out of secular scientific explanations out of physics out of whatever uh, or it came out of god and these are mutually exclusive so it's a zero sum hypothesis meaning you have to choose a, a, a theism or atheism you have to choose either secular scientific um perspective that it came from physics which we haven't demonstrated and or we have to prove it to happen because god and you haven't demonstrated so at the end of the day no one can really prove their side it's just um kind of a zero something where everyone says you no one can really have more or bet or more good or less good evidence it's all to varying degrees subjective because it's uh unfalsifiable it's like I, that. Well, okay, I so think I'm, that you would have to there, there, go ahead. We're going to probably say different things. You go though. <laughs> yeah, I, I was going to say there's go there's ahead. a few things there that I disagree with, but like I think that most of them are 
not really okay. worth talking about. So like the, the main thing that I would be interested in, in digging into is um, number one, I'm interested in why you're a theist then if, if, if you think that there's, you know, it's all just kind of subjective, it's all mm-hmm. kind of up in the air. Wouldn't you then lean towards the null hypothesis and say, I don't have sufficient evidence to say this thing is true. So until I have what I could actually call evidence and not just a kind of general assumption, then I'm going to have to assume that it's not. That's that's how you would do it, like, statistically, like, if you were actually yeah, running a test I, on this if thing. if I assume that it's not a god, I ha- well, it kind of goes back to the fact that it's a zero-sum thing. So if I assume it's not a god, then I'd be implicitly assuming it happens because of secular physical forces, which is equally no valid evidence for it. What's a god so, to you? Is, is yeah. that, like, like, what's a god to you? Yeah, that's that's another so thing that I have a big question about. Um, but that brings me to what Shannon was saying. Right. So you you're saying, well, I it, I would be left to believe that it's up to. And you, I, it's fa- fascinating to me that you keep saying secular physics is so. Fa- <laughs> like, anyway, yeah. that's besides the point. But you're saying, okay, I need to believe that it was something. I don't like the idea of believing that it was physics or whatever so i need to believe that it was something else and then you're ascribing well, that something else no as a nation of god. god allow me to finish my sentence one moment please and then the, and then well because because i think this is where the interesting stuff lies is you're saying I, I there's more evidence for it being god sure whatever for the sake of continuing this conversation i'll grant that i'm interested in what you mean by god then so when you say it's god what does that look like to you? Like, what does that mean? So, God. Um, yeah. You now, uh, technically, you believe in it. The so. God, so it, it's the same God that Jews. Yeah. Okay. So you so, think um, it's the, the technically Christian God. The God, but. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The so Christian you think it's God, Yahweh? The Christian God is the same as the Jewish and Muslim God. Okay. So yes. you you believe Allah everything else from, that follows from that? Like everything else that follows from that. So you think it was um, Yahweh. So if you're talking specifically about the Bible, I believe, okay. So I believe, if you believe specifically about the Bible, um, I believe yeah. that some of the Bible is true and some of it is literary. So I believe specifically, if you're talking about the New Testament, um, I believe um, Jesus was a real person and he is the Son of God or he is um, God, in a sense, um, just a physical manifestation. Um, and But I do believe that there's certain literary aspects of the Bible that um, were more for teaching lessons or morals that may not be 100% historically accurate, mainly the Exodus and Genesis. So you believe in the most complex theory for the for the beginning of the universe then, because you're multiplying entities here, right? So you yeah. you went all the way back to the beginning of the universe, just sa- said, I don't really think I like the idea of it being whatever secular physics is. So it is God. The God that it is is in fact Yahweh, and all of this follows from it as well. Like I need to now reconcile thousands of years of inconsistency in history and my explanation makes more sense because it's less complicated. Like that doesn't um, make sense I mean, to me. So I don't. Mm, so everything so that follows from what you about, believe is um, much more complicated. Like you now, you now have to you now have to provide uh, like myriad explanations for myriad things across the course of the entirety of history. You now have to explain in order to reconcile how you think the universe began. I just say, I'm not really entirely so sure because I'm not a physicist, but this explanation seems to make the most sense based on what we know so far. And you're telling me that that explanation isn't better than it was this specific God and all of this shit follows from it too? So first of all, um, has... I don't believe there's ever been a proven theory for the existence of the universe from a secular perspective. So um, there's that. I don't so believe God. physicists and also Yahweh like and that. also yeah. Adam and Eve we'll and also on. some literary we'll devices and that, also a man rose from the dead. Yeah, there's a and, lot. And, like, that's, like and, the, and, on, and, one second. I, I would love to talk to you about the, the actual <laughs> mountains of evidence that we have for things like the Big Bang and how planets form and where life comes from and all these different, like, we, these are not things that we yeah, just kind of decide yeah, believe, just probably okay, so, happen. Let me start. So, planets formed, I understand that, and accept that evolution has happened, um, abiogenesis, like, these are all proven scientific. I'm, so, I'm talking specifically about the origin of the universe. Right, but, like, you didn't just say that, so, though. That's the, yeah. that's the thing that Shannon was driving at, is that 
you know, we we mm-hmm. have mountains of evidence for how the universe got started. We we understand it pretty well. And what you're doing here is saying, no, don't I don't to, like that no evidence. To, Therefore, the so, not only am I going okay, to well, insert a fun. new idea, a new creator that, that did all these things, who also has his own baggage, right? Because if you say there's a god, then also where did that come from and how does that make sense and what does outside of the universe mean? And like, there's a there's a million problems with that alone, but not even counting that. If you then say, okay, from the, from the beginning of the universe where God started up to humans up to 2,000 years ago when Jesus happened and all that stuff happened, which is the stuff you said is real, all that stuff is real too, you've admitted. So... You're telling us that something, some omnipotent, super powerful being outside of the confines of space and time pooped the universe into existence. And that's where, where the universe started from. Whatever, fine. And then the universe carries on for you know 40, for billions and billions and billions of years. That just things, chaos, randomness, disorder, <laughs> planets forming, stars dying, whatever. On this one planet, there's about 4 billion years of life leading up to one particular species of great ape uh, that, that runs around all across the, the, the planet murdering and raping and, and eating and, and dying and disease and famine and all these things. And then 2,000 years ago specifically, your god's like, ah, shit, I should probably get involved now. I should probably do something about this. Like, it's, it's all gone on for far too long. And the only way that I can teach these things morality and tell them how much I love them is by way of a human sacrifice of myself to myself in, in a shitty part of the desert that doesn't, you know, what, whatever. I'm not going to go to the civilizations that can read and do math. I'm going to go to this one, and I'm going to just have a horrible ceremony of blood and murder. And that, if they don't get that... I don't know what else to do. I put it, I'll put it in a book and that's the best. Like, there's so many problems with that. Okay. So as opposed to just saying mouth, the universe respond. is what the universe is. And 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 we have evidence for it. Like, how is that any better? Okay, so you put words in my mouth um, consistently and have them let me respond. So um, here's say, you, me Fair. saying that I said, oh, I disregard facts. In, uh, I already conceded evolution, abiogenesis, all the things that can be naturally observed, I've already conceded to you. I never uh, said you disregard you facts. Hit me over the head with that for something? Okay. Well, you earlier you said, yeah, I, never said I don't like that. I never said you like any evidence. Um, I think the reason no, that Forrest incorporated all of those is to kind of... And- Go ahead. So you go, we'll give you some time for a sec, Dallas. Sorry. Okay. So, so in the universe, okay. So there are a couple of positive. Either the universe is just a subsection of a larger cosmos and some multiverse, which there's no evidence for, or the universe expanded, under which case, um, how, did, how exactly would it expand um, via natural physics if every, um, whatever action requires an, an action for it? So if the universe would have to expand, someone would have to expand it, right? And same way, if uh, a rock would have to move, oh. you'd have to throw it. Nope. Do, so That's we know the works. universe expanded. Sorry. Though. Yeah, we know it's expanding still. We can watch it happening, and we know okay, why. Yeah, we can see the micro, the microwave so, radiation. But how did it? How did it begin expanding? How, how did the Big Bang, which was a rapid expansion, happen? Mm. So what you're mm-hmm. asking? That's are you question. asking me what happened before the Big Bang, or are you asking me why the universe is expanding now? No, why did why did the Big Bang happen? Is my question. You're looking for the so initiating you're me what factor. happened before the Big Bang? Yeah. Okay. So here's the answer. I don't know because you're asking me what happened okay. before time started outside you of everywhere. No, nope, we certainly yeah. don't because here's what happens here. I'm telling you, I don't know what happened before time started outside of everywhere because that question makes no sense to me. That that I don't know how to ask that question appropriately. And so I'm conceding the fact that there's, you know, maybe there is something, maybe there's nothing, I'm not sure. Like there I have no idea what that even looks like because the concept it's like asking me, you know, what does purple taste like? Or, or, you know, what is a 20 sided cube that I, what even is that? I don't know what you're talking about. What you're doing is saying, not only do I know what that is, but I know what's going on there. There's a creature that's doing the things, pulling the levers. 
And it also has an influence in these other events over here that I also have no evidence for. And it did all these miracles that I have no evidence for. And most of this book that has no evidence is also true, but only the parts that I like and the other parts are literary. Like, you have 50,000 claims here that have no backing all built upon the idea that you don't know what happened before the Big Bang. And I don't either. I just have the guts to say I don't know and end it there. And hopefully someday I well, learn. You, then, I'm not happy with not knowing, <laughs> but I'm not going to make up a bunch of fairy tales to fill in the gaps. So if you don't know, then why is your assumption that it happened because of not God, but it happened because of other hypotheses? And again, like I said, a zero Because I would first have thumb. to prove that there is a God and then I would have to prove well, that the God okay. can do these things, and then I have to prove that the God did do these things. As of right now, well, literally okay. everything Similarly, in the universe has a natural explanation. So why would I make a supernatural explanation for this one special thing? Why wouldn't I assume that the, the law of uniformitarianism, which unites all science, also applies in this instance? Yeah, it seems like you're just saying, so all, uh -huh, if I go back to the beginning of the literal fucking universe, that's the one mm -hmm. place where both you and I can definitively say, I don't know. That's where my God goes. Eat it, you it's, guys. It's just the making, ha, ha, ha. It's, it's the same it's thing as back when we used to say that God, is, God, God controls God. lightning, and then we learn what lightning is. And we used to say that God's cause disease, and then we learn what diseases are. Someday we'll learn about the beginning in the universe, and then your God will disappear from that region too. You're just making your God this little pocket of ignorance that gets smaller and smaller and smaller because we just keep learning stuff. So let me respond to that for one second, please. So if sure. your argument uh, is that whatever, that um, it's, I'm arguing from ignorance or whatever, or that you don't necessarily believe, but the thing is, it's a zero-sum hypothesis. So these are, it happened because of secular explanations, be it whatever, whatever physics, um, new scientists could come along and prove, it's either because of that or it's because of that. So because it's a zero-sum hypothesis, my point is, your assumption that in that there's some hypothesis you're going to choose any side and your default is going to be secular side and you've already conceded oh, okay. that you're already choosing something with it. I also so, don't agree, agree with that. <laughs> That's I don't a agree whole with other that. thing okay, so that I don't agree here's, with. Here's the thing. So there's there's something that you're ignoring in the dichotomy that you created there. You're saying you're saying there's a zero sum hypothesis because it's either it either was God or it wasn't God. Right, like that's the that's mm -hmm. the the dichotomy that you're creating. Is it was or it wasn't? Right? Am I understanding that correctly? Let's make sure yeah. I'm understanding you because you felt misunderstood. Okay, so you don't yeah. understand why we're saying it wasn't God. Is that what you're saying? You don't understand why, or you don't yeah. understand why yeah. we why, reject why is that it okay. is. You don't understand why we reject yeah, so that I, it is God. Well, my specifically, okay. I don't know why your default assumption is that it isn't God. My, okay, so I'm going to go back to what I said initially. It's because I don't think a God existing is possible, right? So my position is that it isn't God because I don't think that the existence of God is possible. You would have all of the work to do to define a God that makes sense first, that makes sense okay, at all, do that doesn't have a definition that's internally inconsistent. Everyone that I've heard has had problems, and most of them involve some form of cognition, like God has to have desires, for example. God has to have wants and needs, and most of them, especially in the Christian realm, involve a God who's perfect, right? Who's holy, self-sustaining, and perfect. And it is internally inconsistent and contradictory for a God that is holy, self-sustaining, and perfect to have existed before the universe, outside of the universe, and wanted to create a universe. Because that would mean that that God was not wholly perfect, self-sustaining, and content without the addition of something. That makes that definition internally inconsistent, which is why I don't believe it. You keep trying to shove the Christian God in there, expecting me to accept all of the baggage that comes with it without giving a definition for it, and then wondering why I reject it. So there's the reason why I reject one of them. If you have one that's better, okay. that doesn't have the same sort of inconsistencies, maybe that maybe I'll believe that one. But right now, I don't think any of them are plausible or possible. And I don't think that the beginning of the universe, not being something that I can explain, is a reason to believe in one by default, just because I don't have a better explanation. I think that's horrible epistemology, and I won't subscribe to it. 
I think Shannon hit the nail on the head there when she said, I don't believe in one of them. We're atheists just like you're an atheist. We believe in one less God than you do. All the other possible gods out there, all the other creation myths, all the other reasons that people think that the universe might have started, you don't believe in any of them. And I don't believe in yours either. So we're just a little bit more atheist than you are is all. Does that make sense? Oh, he hung up. He dropped after that. He, he went away. So I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I wanted to get into a few <laughs> other things with him, I'm but we haven't I talked about it. answered your like, question, I guess. <laughs> you answered it real good, though. Uh, man, there was, there was a lot there that we could have gone into. That, that guy had a million problems that I wanted to tear into, but we just don't have the time, and clearly he does not have the patience. Um, it's always a so problem when you need to go I'm back like, to the beginning of time to be like, that's where God is. He's seriously, right there. See? <laughs> I wanted to ask, like, like can you, like, yeah, would you apply that logic to corner have you been back? <laughs> Seriously, like that it's it's the I always play this game of just like would you do that with anything else? Would you use that same logic right. in any other way? You know, if it, you weren't at the oh, factory where this can of soda came from, you don't know where it was made. This could have been made by the Coke fairy that lives in my garage who makes Coca-Cola and cocaine. And you you can't prove that the Coke fairy isn't real cuz you didn't see this one can get made. You know, not sponsored by Coca-Cola. Uh, but it just Field trip to Forest like, oh, Garage. Man, <laughs> Sounds like the See? best place. <laughs> There's fairies oh and cocaine. <laughs> oh, weird. <laughs> no wonder you're always so fucking uh, happy. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> you found it. Uh, we have a, a bunch of calls that I really want to get to all of them, okay. and there's no way we're going to be able to, but I want to try to tear through as many of these as oh, possible. Um, so there's a couple of good evolution calls, and there's a couple more a atheism calls. I'm looking at uh, either maybe... You want to, you want to, okay, because I was looking at maybe line number I want to watch you do an evolution four? call. I just want to sit here like this. Okay, yeah, <laughs> bro. You want to do four or 18, because those are both really good evolution questions. Hmm... You know, if you would say the numbers I, in the bracket instead of on the margin, I'd know what shortcut I should be ready to press. <laughs> oh, it's two and five. So two and five. Okay. Um, yeah. I'm going to go. Oh, five. Five. Okay. I'm saying yeah, five no, right I, now. I figured you would. I'm going to do two you got speed next. round. <laughs> I think so much better. Okay. Speed round. So what if we tried to speed round and just do all the atheists? Every atheist call. You're going to get like two minutes <laughs> and then we're going to finish off with the theist calls. That seems dope to me, but I can, I can crank through show. a couple of these. Cause like both, we wait, both these evolution questions too. are really good. I'm going to make sure I do both of them, but I'm going to start with this one uh, is Liam from Nevada. Pronouns are he, him asking, why did sex evolve? Liam, did you have any particulars about that that you wanted to dig into? Or is that the whole thing? Um, same color as, what was it? Sunday? Oh, yeah! Hey! Yeah, I remember you! How are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. I, uh, I'm re- I'm, I started The Ancestor's Tale, and, uh... Hey! I was thinking about it, and I'm curious... Yeah. And I'm curious, um... Like, what is the purpose of, of biological sex? And, and then I guess, uh, as yeah. an additional question, um, a little small into that. Um, when it first evolved, would it have been like you know what we think of as male and female with like the larger and smaller gametes, or would it have been something completely different? Oh, my dude's talking about gametes up in here. Yeah. Okay. So you got you already you already know the terminology, and I'm super stoked about it. So there's a couple of things you got to know. Um, first of all, what, what sex is really, really, really good at is creating variation. It's, it's, it's good at blending, uh, uh, different alleles together. Um, so, so for those of you in the, in the chat who aren't familiar with the terminology, you have DNA that it's the code for life and, and, and everything's controlled by DNA. It's not really, that's a gross oversimplification. It leaves a lot out, but whatever. Um, and DNA is broken into little chunks called genes. Each gene codes for a specific thing. That's also gross oversimplification. Don't worry about it. And so you've got these genes uh, that do a thing, and there's different flavors of these genes. So there's not just one kind of gene for you know height, for hair color, for eye color, for uh, a cold tolerance, for for you know fat accumulation, for whatever it is. Um, there's a lot of different variations to these genes, which we call alleles. And so 
the idea behind you know sex, but sexual reproduction is the fact that you are instead of just having clonal evolution, where you have one individual like a bacteria doing binary fission, just cloning itself over and over, and whatever mutations carry over do, which is very slow. You're now blending different alleles from different parents, and that produces more variety faster, and it allows um, deleterious mutations to be flushed out faster. It allows beneficial mutations to spread throughout the population faster. It basically puts evolution on a little bit of a hyperdrive. And that's the generally ex like accepted hypothesis when we talk about the evolution of sex is that it increases variation. However, what's really important to remember is that there's different kinds of natural selection. There's different kinds of you know, models of what we see in selection. Um, and there are actually several experiments that show sexual reproduction as opposed to asexual reproduction not producing a tremendous amount of variation and it actually stabilizes things and oh. reduces variation and that's where it falls into the second thing that i talked about where it really helps flushing out deleterious mutations and it helps kind of like make things stable so um you can watch episode three of my my show the light of evolution on my channel and i talk about these different uh, um you know patterns perfect so you know what i'm talking about with the patterns of evolution where you have directional selection where the whole population kind of slides into one direction of, of like a, a trend you can have stabilizing selection yeah where the extreme yeah. ends of the traits fall off and you just have more frequency in one section or you can have disruptive selection where the graph collapses in on itself and the normal ones quote quote all die out and the extreme weirdos tend to become more populous. Um, and so this is what sex allows squirrels, us to right? do. You're always going to have like the squirrels. Yeah. Yeah. The, or, yeah. The mice or whatever it was. Yeah. So you're always going to have variation within a population, but if you can blend these alleles together and not just have this one's, you know, a little bit more colored this direction, or this one's a little bit bigger, that direction, or whatever like that. Instead, you have some of the color genes and some of the height genes and some of the weird, whatever other ones all blending together. Um, it's like, you know, shuffling a deck of cards, different combinations producing different variety and some of the combinations are better. Um, now, it's this part, second part of your question was, when sex first evolved, what would it look like? And for that, you know, remember, you, know, you, you didn't have little amoebas with dicks or anything, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't anything <laughs> too crazy. It would have just been, you know, horizontal gene transfer. And you can see that now in, you know, if you look at bacteria, bacteria, you know, reproduced by, by binary fission Except also, you can look up bacterial conjugation, which is freaking bacteria sex. They literally connect, they crack a little hole in their cell wall, and they can just transfer plasmids, which plasmids are little chunks of, of prokaryotic DNA. They can just transfer, swap them, like flipping them all about. They can lit, it's like bacteria sex. Um, and then there's also horizontal gene transfer, which comes from, you can get uh, it's this thing called transformation, which is the stupidest term for the, it's something so wonderful. It's such a simple term. Um, you can have um, a, a, a non-virulent bacteria, bacteria that are harmless, and have them here in a Petri dish, and then take some harmful virulent bacteria and kill them all put fire to them and completely kill them. They're all dead. And then you just mix them all together. And the live, non-virulent, harmless bacteria will literally just slurp up the harmful bacteria's DNA and become harmful bacteria. And they can literally like just take on Whoa. these new genes. Um, bacteria are really good at just like sucking up new genes. Um, and I actually did this once in a genetics lab to prove that I could. I took some uh, some some E. coli and I put them in a thermocycler, get some really hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold over and over and over. And so it what it did is it broke their cell walls open. Like if you ran a car really hot and then dump water on the engine, it's going to split in half. Um, and so I broke their cell walls open and then I mixed in a plasmid for antibiotic resistance, blended them up, and they absorbed it. And I was able to smear these bacteria on an antibiotic uh, uh, plate and they fucking grew in ways they weren't supposed to be able to. Had to murder them with fire real quick um and so but yeah this is a thing that bacteria can do they're really good at that and so when you talk about early sex that would have been in eukaryotic organisms like us these eukaryotes would have been able to transfer genes this way um uh, uh, and and it probably didn't start off with actual gametes um but 
as as you get multicellular organisms, then having dedicated cells for that kind of reproduction would have been really, really helpful. Um, and that, when you get into that whole thing, is where you get into, you know, polyploidy and like why you have haploid cells versus diploid cells. And like I talked about in that episode, you have, you know, diploid species like us, or you have hexaploid species like wheat, or you have uh, octoploid species like strawberries, and you have lots more reasons and lots more possibilities for sexual variation. Also, one more thing on that, and then I'll shut up, is that some species use that ploidy they use the the set of chromosomes they have for sex determination. So when you're talking about males versus females, um, ants, for example, all female ants have, are diploid and all male ants are haploid. So if you have an ant egg that doesn't get fertilized, it just turns into a male. And if it does get fertilized, it turns into a female. So the haploid eggs that don't get fertilized, they only have one set of their chromosomes, they still develop and they're a male. And that male can only pass on that one set of its chromosomes. Which means, if you think about this, male ants can never have sons. They can only have daughters because a fertilized egg is going to be female. They can have grandsons. If their daughter lays an egg that doesn't get fertilized, that'll be a male ant. But they can never have sons. They can only have daughters. How fucking cool is that? Liam, does that answer your question? Because I will talk about it for the next five hours and I got to stop. Uh, that, is, that is fascinating. <laughs> I, that's like, that, that's like, uh, like the you, you are where you eat thing taken to a, uh, a very, in, like, like a, a weird level. I, I never would have like thought about that. That's what I'm talking about. You literally slurp up the DNA and become the thing. It's like a dumb cartoon. I injected the DNA and I grew wings. It's like that kind of shit, but in reality, very small. <laughs> I just want someone to talk about me the way Forrest talks about biology. <laughs> That's what I want for my life. <laughs> I need such hard drugs to get the kind of serotonin that Forrest just got. Oh, man. Oh, dude, I'm stoked to watch. death. This okay. is what I'm here. Uh, an excitable young parson learning about the universe. Dude, I'm all over the place. This is exciting. I love okay. it. I'm so happy. Now, now I've got to know, though. Okay. So if, okay. So if that was the case, then there wouldn't uh, – the, the, does that um, kind of – the bacteria that has that, that early form, would it um, – it wouldn't have a male and a, a, a female version, right? So when would um, that kind of, when would multiple like sexes uh, evolve? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or would that, did I miss something or, or like, what's yeah, the- Yeah, no, you didn't, you didn't that? at all. That's a great question. Uh, so it's important to remember two things. Number one is that, you know, I, 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 I talked about bacteria a lot and it, it's really easy to take what I said and run with it a little bit. And I don't want you to, uh, you haven't yet, but just in case, um, you know, the, bacteria are remarkably complex. Like when we talk about early life forms that like the, you, you know, Using the term bacteria would be a bit of an oversimplification and it would actually give them more credit than they're worth. Um, but like, so bacteria are radically cool. Um, so these early things, uh, they wouldn't have, you know, they wouldn't have had what you could call true sexes. So there are species today that don't have true males and females. They have only one size of gamete, but they still have different mating types. So things that kind of behave in what you could call a male fashion or a female fashion. It's also really important to remember that biological sex isn't just it. While it is usually defined by gamete size, a big example of what I just said, and also many other examples, there's lots of ways where that doesn't actually work. And there's more than two sizes of gametes, or there's only one size of gamete, or the same individual produces both gametes. And yet there are still, you know, different sexes and different groups. And like, so there's a, a lot of wiggle room in there. So when we talk about early life before the production of actual gametes or germ cells, then yeah, it's kind of up. Like I, I, I can't think of any actual data that we have on what that would have looked like off the top of my head, but as far as like what it more than likely would have looked like based on what we can see around us today, um, it is entirely possible for there to be what you would call mating types without actually having what you might call true males and true females or anything of that sort. Um, there are still like there are protozoa and things like that that do that today. Um, yeah, there's, there's, there's lots of things, lots, lots of variation. Biological sex is one of those things, like when I was talking about DNA and I said, hey, all of this stuff is what you learn about DNA. And I just recited what you teach in middle school. And I kept having to say, that's not entirely true. Biological sex is the same way. We talk about gamete size. We talk about males and females. We talk about all these different things. Um, and we were leaving out a massive piece of the picture just to make it something digestible that we can talk about in two minutes. You know what I mean? So I, I oh, hope that I helps because it, it is real fuzzy. 
Okay, there we go. Sorry, you cut out for Do a second. Do I still second. have you there? Um, oh, sorry. Have that... Yep, yep, I can hear you now. Um, Sweet. Okay. Um, that that is so that is so fascinating. Um, I'm gonna for Christmas I I put on my little wish list the uh, the book that I think that you were recommending that um was which was um what was it called Evolution's Rainbow I think and yeah I'm pick I'm picking that up for Christmas hopefully. Um, That's a does that one. does that cover that that whole does that uh, uh cover like the. No. What you're talking about? So it, this this book talks a lot about like it, it's it's sexuality and 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 sex in nature and people. Um, they have, uh, yes. So the the first chunk of the book is all about sex and diversity and 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 sex within bodies and sex roles and whatnot in animals. Um, and then it goes into you know humans as well. Well, humans are animals, but you get the distinction she's trying to make. So like, um, but yeah, it starts out with the rest of the animal kingdom, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. the second half of the book, the uh, the or I should say the second third of the book is all about you know in humans, and then the last part of the book is about you know cultural perspective of gender because remember gender is a social construct, not a biological one, and so she talks mm -hmm. a lot about different you know cultural constructs of what gender and sexuality are and how they play out, which is really important if you're interested in bioanthropology. So that's a really dope book. Um, uh, there's a few others that, uh, I definitely don't think are outside of your reading range, but they are outside of what's appropriate to recommend to a child. So like, I'm trying to think about what I can cover here, but like, there's a, there's a lot out there. And if you look up, like, honestly, if you just Google, you know, good books on, on evolution and sexual behavior, sexual dimorphism, um, there's, there's quite a bit out there. That's really, really, really good to read. Um, ask your parents. If you can buy this one, uh, this one is called Evolution and Human Sexual Behavior. Um, it's it's not incredibly graphic. It's 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 not pornographic. It's just it talks about human cultures. But a huge part of this book is also looking at the animal kingdom and talking about like we do these weird things, kind of like these lizards, and we do these weird things, kind of like these fish, and it gives a lot of context. But it is a little bit adult in some of the reading, so you know definitely ask your folks about it first. Well, cool. Liam, you're freaking well, awesome. You Thanks so much for calling back. Do you, okay. Yeah. Do you have anything else you wanted to ask us about before we move on to the next call? No, I just wanted to say uh, thank you for us. Sorry I didn't have a question for you, Shannon. Um, would you great too. And then um, when, you, when you have the time, if you have the time, if you want to, it'd be mm -hmm. uh, great if you could put a, a list of, like, um, science, like, you know, the science books, that, like the ones that you have on your bookshelf the ones that you like on your mm. website, because that would be very handy. I, put, I have them on my, uh, my, my Patreon discord. One of my patrons asked me for pictures of all my shelves and he wrote out all the names. So I might, might transfer that over to my, my website sometime if I have you know 10 minutes to do it. Okay. Well, Liam, Thank you're you. a rock and, star. Uh, Thank you so love, much for calling love in. Love both your channels and everything you do. Thanks, Liam. Yep. Thanks so much, Goodbye. Liam. And, uh, you're a rock star, dude. Take care. Keep studying. Yeah, man. Oh, I'm sorry. I cut, cut him off no, at the end delightful. there. But like, yes. Thanks. Liam, you're a rock star. Keep studying. Keep learning. Never stop. Friggin' yeah, that was so refreshing. exciting. Uh, oh, dude, the rest I of this isn't going to be it. as, as uh, wholesome. <laughs> <think it's> wholesome. <laughs> so that was there great. Is, uh, the there's a poll on here that's just for you. Do you want to jump onto that guy? Yeah, sure. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I know which one you're talking about. Don't Let's do it. Excited. How, Shannon, yeah, how are you Yay! on time? <laughs> Shannon, how are you on time? Uh, oh. I, I've got about another hour, maybe, okay. max. Just making sure that we're not uh, cool, abusing cool. your time. Oh, oh, I'm roboting. I'll go quiet. <clears throat> it's my fault. Well, well it's, it's my fault. It's because I, I have the thing here. All right, so we'll go till 8.30 then. That sounds fine with me. All right, so we've got well, Martin in Maine who wants to talk to Shannon about abortion. Ooh. Martin, how are you today? You're on the line. Hello. I'm good. How are you? Hi. So far, so good. Hi. Never had a bad day. Hi. <laughs> I believe you for it. So, um, yes. My, I have a, uh, I don't think that the bodily autonomy argument is the, the best one to go with. And um, okay. <clears throat> I think I can 
put in some better thoughts. Um, first, I guess I'll... Uh, so just to be clear, you think you have body. a better argument for pro-choice? Yeah, sort of. Um, I'm sorry. Okay. Yep, this is my first time I'm gonna doing this. I'm going to sit back this, and so watch this happen. You'll have to bear sure. with me. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, Takes some getting used to. Well, so basically, I um, can you summarize your bodily autonomy argument for me? So I don't straw man you. Sure, like a really high level synopsis would be that nobody has the right to access my body without my permission. I I just want to throw out there that like and, uh, the term argument nobody, from bodily autonomy, or bo bodily autonomy argument is the summary in my opinion. Bodily autonomy. That's the whole thing. I don't know, man. Like, yes, I don't know how to get any deeper than that, or that you need to. Yeah. So what's what about yeah, that? Do you think that's a good point. Um. Well, um, I guess I when I hear people compare it to the the violinist scenario, I don't think that they're analogous. Um, they don't make sense to me. Um. I guess my points are that, um, oh, you, you'd agree with that? I just said, so to, to you, the viol violinist analogy, let's, well, m m some people may not know what the violinist analogy is. That's not exactly the argument that I use. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. But the violinist analogy is if you wake up one day and you find out that you are attached to a violinist and they're using I don't know, some organ of yours to sustain their life. I can't remember what it was. And you're like physically attached to one another. Do you have the right? And they're going to die if you detach yourself from them. Do you have the right to detach yourself from them? That's the violinist argument. Right. So you don't think that that's so, compelling? Yeah, well, I don't think it equals out to um, the scenario of abortion in that... Um, Why is that? Well, would you agree that um, the fetus um, arrives in his situation completely unwillingly? Yeah. Sure. Um, okay. Would you agree that um, it's common that um, the fetus arrives in his situation um, due to actions of the pregnant person more often? Of course, not always. Situation of rape. Not always. And also other, it's inconsequential. It's entirely inconsequential also. Like, for example, like, and I'll give you a scenario that I, I've used frequently Why? before. Why is it inconsequential? Because it's not applicable in any other scenario. Bodily autonomy always takes precedence. If I stab you, for example, you, it's just you and I in a room. You and I have the same blood type. I stab you. You're bleeding out in front of me. There is a doctor there that can't donate blood to you. Can stitch you up, but you need a blood transfusion in order to stay alive. Do I have to give you my blood? I stabbed you. I caused that scenario. Do I have to give you my blood? No, I, don't, I wouldn't say that you would. Right. So any argument that you're about to make that says, well, the fetus didn't cause this scenario or the whammons did. So the whammons have to have to do it because the whammons made this happen. I'm going to reject for the same reason that you just rejected the not having to give your blood to the person that you stabbed, even though it would save their life. And you're the reason that they're dying. I'm saying that you don't have access to my body. You can't use my body to sustain your life without my permission. And you're saying, yeah, well, I don't accept that. There are scenarios where I think you should have to. And I say, no, -uh, there's none. And you don't apply that in other scenarios. So why are you applying it to me? Well, I'm not saying that um, anyone should ever be forced. Too. I, I always think there should be an option for someone to be able to seek out an abortion. I am pro-choice. So you're pro-choice. Um, yes. 
You just you're just I not compelled think, um, by that argument because you think that women should just you know, I, I guess the way that people look at it is you know pay for their choices. You know, you did the crime, you do the time. That sort of thing. <laughs> no, you made a baby go in no. you, which isn't something that you do on your <laughs> own, by the way. So you should have to have it. But in every like in every other instance where something like this comes to pass, it's not even questioned for a moment. So I just I don't so understand the inconsistency. I can think of one, one scenario. One scenario I think would be more comparable in the um, similar to the violinist is if like say you signed up to be a, a marrow donor, and mm -hmm. um, you matched with someone. And, mm -hmm. you know, they were on their deathbed. It, it was their last hope. And then you back out in the last minute, dooming them. Um, mm -hmm. Is yeah, there some kind that. of negligence there? No, no there's you can and, still change you know, your mind. Is there any kind of moral implication that, you know, I mean, you can think whatever you want do. about that person, but they still have the right to do it. Right? They could get scared of the pain at the last minute. They could get sick. They could decide that the person isn't worth saving because they find like it, it literally doesn't matter. The reasons for their decision are inconsequential. The point is that it is their decision to do what they want with their body. Like you yeah. can give, and you I can agree. judge I mean, I can them think of, personally. No one can stop can you from having a perspective why. on them. But they have the right to do yep. it is the point. I I agree, I, and you know I totally respect everything you're saying. And I used I use a lot of your arguments that I've seen um, to cool. you know try and convince a lot of my friends. Um, so I'm You're just at least a little bit then, to, right? To get your <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so one more thought I have about um, cool, like maybe put. Um, to say, like, to put a, a restriction on maybe government-funded or insurance-covered abortions in cases Why where it um, you do that? affects the health of the mother, um, kind of to find, like, a middle ground where... Who gets to decide um, that? Who gets to decide, like, what um, kind of panel do, uh, does a woman have to give her private personal information to that gets to determine whether or not the abortion that she's about to have is a medical necessity for her or not to find out whether or not it's covered like why do we have to give up our medical privacy to the moral police in order to explain why we deserve our health care when nobody else does well one thought i had is that um maybe if they if there's like a, a little formality they that people seeking abortions go through, um, like maybe the first thing that's discussed is domestic Should violence. Should smokers awareness. get cancer treatment? Um, Should smokers get cancer treatment? Like, are, do they are they entitled to cancer should. treatment? Yeah, they should be. So, because if your argument is that there should be a moral test to to decide whether or not you get the health care that you need, the, that that's going to be a hard no from me. That's a slippery slope. You're, you, we've already determined that women have Mother. a right to have an abortion, but now we're saying, well, you have a right to have an abortion, but you still have to pass a moral test in order to find out whether or not your insurance that you pay for will cover it. You need to give, you need to give up your medical privacy so that some panel of people who are about to judge whether or not you are morally reprehensible enough to not deserve the health care you want can pass judgment on you. Like there's no other circumstance mm. where somebody has to pass a moral test in order to get medical care. But in this instance, people are, should have to pass a moral test to get medical care. Like all of this well, seems to boil down to, I want to be able to judge women. I want, I want to be able to know which women did the bad thing. I don't want any of my money going to the slutty women who are just getting abortions for fun because Christ knows we all love to get abortions. We just line the fuck up because they're so much fun. We can't wait to get them. I once went to a bachelor up party. We all got an abortion. We got pregnant just so that we could get them as a matter of fact, because they're so much fucking fun. Like it's, it's ridiculous to me that people want to judge pregnant people so desperately. Like, 
Just let us have our medical I privacy. Don't and want, let us make decisions about our own I body do not and want let our to, insurance cover what it covers. I don't want to judge anybody. Um, my whole goal is to maybe have less unwanted pregnancies through um, discussion and education. And maybe, you know, that's a, that's I, a I imagine goal. I agree that, with that goal. I um, imagine that in many instances, there are people who are getting these procedures and, you know, being forced into them by their partners or their families and, you know, feel scared and have no one to talk to about it. You know, maybe if, For sure. you know, to be covered, there's a, a one counseling meeting that you go through where things like domestic oh. violence are discussed, things like depression are discussed, then maybe it could lead to that those um, that education and discussion. We need better uh-huh. mental health care in general, but I don't think that there should be any sort of gatekeeping scenario at all, especially one that can be used as a foot in the door to decide which women do and do not deserve health care. Like, that's not a litmus test that I'm ready to sign up for even as a hypothetical. Now, if, you're, if your argument is that we should have better assistance for people who are in domestic violence and abuse situations so that they can get out of those situations, yeah, I'm on your team. If there, we're saying that people should have counseling provided to them whenever they're getting any sort of medical procedure so that they can better understand the risks and have like post-procedure care that's, that involves their mental health, yeah, I'm on board. Let's do that across the board. Let's not create a unique and specific scenario that just applies to women, that just applies to women when they want to have access to abortion and then insert it there and act as though that's what we're doing and that, act as though that's because we care specifically about healthcare and domestic abuse, but not apply those principles elsewhere because what that really could be is a foot in the door to gatekeep women's access to their healthcare, invade their privacy and create scenarios where those unwanted pregnancies that you were talking about there's more of them because women are now afraid of what they're going to have to go through in order to get abortion access if you want to do that across the board i'm on your team let's campaign i will fundraise with you if you want to do it just to women who are looking for to get abortions then you're focusing on the wrong thing you're focusing on a symptom and not the problem and you're not going to solve anything you're just going to scare women and create hurdles for them to get the health care that they deserve to get hurdle less Well, I guess my thought was that, like, if there was a middle ground between the people who are pro-choice and pro-life, that, you know, saying, you know, maybe even just to appease that, you know, we... I won't see an inch of ground. We, I don't want to be in the middle. That, I want to be right where I'm standing. <laughs> That's where I want to be. Well, because now you have abortion being completely illegalized, which is insane. And, you know, even talk of like you, if you leave your state to go seek abortion in other states that you could be charged Mm -hmm. with a crime for that. And I mean, this is turning into, you know, a communist state. Yeah, some dystopian bullshit. um, You know, sickening. Yeah. 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 But I don't think that it should be on the women to constantly concede ground so that people will give us the rights that we deserve because we're one of the good ones who are willing to give concessions that are just because that's how our rights got eroded to begin with. That, I'm not doing that anymore. That's going to be a hard the fuck no. Okay. That's fair. Cool. Good um, well, Martin, this has been a I think we agree more than we disagree. We're just call. agreeing vigorously. <laughs> yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we got a, that, we got a couple sense. other people definitely... on the line that we got to get through. Do you have any other questions, Shannon? Are, are you good? Like, what what's... Oh, I'm where, good. Where I'm good. Like, I, I understand Martin's perspective. A lot of people like Martin, I can respect in this call because I, I think some people find this a, a morally ambiguous territory and they want to explore it. And I respect that. Uh, mm-hmm. But I will not cede ground to it. I, ju- I just won't. It's far too important to advocate for in this space. So I hope you can understand my perspective on this, Martin, is that I'm not willing to give an inch and understand the reason why. It doesn't mean that I have any sort of like detrimental, you know, 
sort of perspective on you or why you're calling. I'm just, this is something that I'm emphatic and enthusiastic uh, about defending. And I won't, con I will not concede. I will not yield. I just won't. So, but I, I appreciate you talking it through with me and giving me the opportunity to, to bounce ideas off of each other. So, and we do have more callers. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you. I appreciate the call. <laughs> All right. I'll let you get to them. All right, Martin. Have a good rest of your okay. day. Take care, Martin. Have a good night. I needed popcorn for that. That was fantastic. <laughs> I didn't want to say a word. Like I, there are so many times where I wanted to jump in, and then you just fucking just demand over here, just like work the body, work the body. Yeah, no, I, I just, I just, yeah. Oh my god, killing it, I think you killing came it in the here. right place. So good. But, yeah. No, it was great. And, and like, you know, Martin, like you said, he's not a bad dude. Like, as I, I appreciated him taking the time he to ask to you. Know, his arguments, it, I think. Yeah, he was asking good questions in a, in a reasonable way and actually listening to what you had to say. I appreciate that so freaking much. Yeah, but like sure. that, that argument of like, well, can't we just find some small compromise? Absolutely drives me up a wall because it's like, here's this group of people that want to treat you like an animal. And just like, you know, you're this breeding machine that, you know, anytime yeah. you have any kind of sex, you're this immoral slut and every man that wants to have sex, well, he's <laughs> just being a man. And you have this insane, misogynistic, toxic culture over here. And the other side's like, I would like for us to be treated like human beings, please. And we're like, well, yeah. can we find some middle ground? Can we just treat you yeah. a little bit like shit? Just can we you know, maybe take away <laughs> some of your rights? And when you're like, I'd still like to be a human, they're like, well, this is why we can't have any compromise. We can never sort anything <laughs> out with you being so, so extremist. Yeah. And it's like, oh my gosh. That kill. I know that's not what this dude was doing, but like that's oftentimes the conversation that we get. Oh, like, I've, this, I have been we need definitely some... on the other side of that one. <laughs> yeah, I've had yeah, men no, I, oh literally God, tell it. me that I don't have like to the, say the words you don't have the right to your body once you get pregnant. You right. don't longer like that. Literally right. say the words. So this have you was, heard the word vessel warm before? Summer breeze. I have. <laughs> right, have what, dude? Oh my gosh. I, oh, I was going to say, like, have you heard that guy talking? Is there some politician calling women vessels whenever they whenever they're pregnant? No. They're a host. They're a vessel. Oh, it's some somebody here in the States. I can't remember. You can look it up on the YouTubes and the politician calls women a, a host. You're no longer a person. You're a host. You're just a vessel now. And it's like, oh, my glob, dude. Uh, lose it every time. Yeah. But no, I, I that was a great call. Oh, my gosh. That was wonderful. Um, thanks so much for that. <laughs> Uh, so we got two calls left, and I I think that uh, brackets number two is the one that I want to do next because it'll be fast and it'll be fun, yeah, and then brackets number okay. six uh, will be a great way to end the show, I think, in my opinion. Yes, um, <laughs> let's do so, it. So, sure. yep. uh, let's go for uh, I believe it's Kiefer in Tennessee. Pronouns are he, him. I hope it's Kiefer. Is it Kiefer? Am I saying your name right? You're on the line, whoever you are. Yes, you are. Sweet. Hi, and you wanted to ask about uh, uh, mammals laying eggs. Is that what it is? Oh, I'll go back on mute. Yeah. <laughs> you've mentioned before that uh, mammals, all mammals used to lay eggs. And I was just kind of wondering, I mean, I've yeah. got a whole list of biology questions I would love to ask you. But the first one on that list is that if all mammals used to lay eggs and now we don't, what was the evolutionary process like to get from, from there to where we are now? Like, what is the difference? Like, what even yeah. is an egg? And, you know, how, how did we get here? Yeah, oviparity became oviviviparity became viviparity. And here's what that means. Um, so uh, mammals as a clade, as a group, uh, we evolved about 220 million years ago during the Mesozoic era. Um, and at that time, all of us would have been egg laying. Actual placental mammals and marsupials uh, evolved about 120 million years ago. So there's about 100 million year gap here where all mammals are egg laying mammals. Now there are only two species of egg laying mammals. They're what we call the monotremes, um, and those are the echidna and the platypus. So these are mammals that still lay eggs. Um, they still have milk patches instead of nipples, um, but they are still mammals because, fun fact, live birth has nothing to do with being a mammal. Being a mammal means that you have fur and you lactate. And there's a couple other things as well, like a post anal tail and a notochord, but like, you know, whatever. Um, but those are the main ones is hair and lactation. Um, that's where the word mammal comes from is from mammary. Um, and so we have these, you know, early, you know, uh, mammals are laying eggs. Then 120 million years ago, we have a split 
with the placentals and the marsupials who are now giving live birth, but in very different ways. Um, and as far as the transition from these two things is concerned, we can look out into nature now and see weird funkadelic intermittent species. So egg laying is what we call oviparity. Um, and live birth is what we call viviparity. Um, some people say viviparity, like they'll say that it's a viviparous species instead of a vivipara species, which sounds like a snake. I don't like it. But anyway, it, you've got these uh, uh, ovipara species and, and viviparous <laughs> species or viviparous species. Um, you also have oviviviparity, which is where you have weird egg sac things in your body in what you could technically call like a uterus kind of structure and then they hatch in you and then you give birth to live young and it's fucking bananas uh and there's there's a lot of variety in there like for example some species of sharks um they they are oviviviparous uh, they they have eggs in their shark body that hatch in there and the babies be swimming around eating each other, and the one that's the best cannibal sharks are the ones that get born, and how fucked up is that? Or you have things like uh, 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 anacondas, which are, you know, they, they are way more on the viviparous side. They give live birth, but they still have, like, these kind of pseudo-egg structures inside. So, like, we have a weird transition in here, and it really depends on, like, you know where you're looking, but like the, the best things about live birth, the reason why they evolved um, is that when you have an amniotic egg, you have a, a, a baby growing in an egg, um, their it, external surroundings are now independent of the mother and those can have big ramifications. That egg can get stepped on and squished. Um, lots of egg laying species have temperature dependent sex determination. So if it gets too hot, you're going to have all boys in your litter. If it gets you know too cold, you're going to have all girls in your litter. Um, and that's kind of you know could be problematic, I guess. Um, the uh, uh, you have egg uh, uh, size as an issue if the you know embryo grows at the wrong rate or whatever, it could be suffocated in its own egg. Um, the egg is only a set amount of resources um, and that, that they can never have any more resources coming in. Um, uh, the a, You have clutch size you have to worry about, how many eggs are you going to produce at once and what's the nutritional benefit to that? There's a huge amount of evolution studies on clutch size that like, well, this one had way, it laid way more eggs so the species was stronger, but the mothers died sooner because they gave so many resources and blah, blah, blah. Um, the cool thing about giving live birth is that you keep that bun in the oven until it's fully cooked. Um, and you can, you know, protect it within you. It gets constant nutrients within you. It has epigenetic changes based on your life. Um, mothers that face like starvation conditions, especially during the second trimester, tend to have babies that have obesity throughout their life. No matter what they eat, their bodies adapt epigenetically within the womb to soak up extra nutrients. Um, so like there, there's cool things like that thing, which you can speed along evolution in this way. Um, you also have, uh, uh, you know, in marsupials especially, pausing gestation. A kangaroo can be pregnant and just shut that shit off for a while and not terminate the pregnancy. Lots of animals can, can terminate pregnancy. Lots and lots and lots of animals can have abortions on purpose. Kangaroos and shit can just stop growing the embryo for a while carry on about their kangaroo life doing kangaroo stuff and then when conditions approve they just turn it back on and finish pregnancy so uh the the pathway wow. there from oviparity to viviparity um you know we see what you could call transitions within species today um it's it's hard to say for sure you know what we go on we can see bone structures and and, and things like that change is why we know that we were placentals by 120 million years because we can see there's you know physical differences that last um but uh, as far as the selection pressures and the reasons for it, it's it's just a totally new way to do babying, uh, and it works in really cool ways. So there's there's a tremendous amount of variety here. So it's it's sort of like a weird adaptive radiation situation where we found new ways to give birth in 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 in, in better environments and better systems. Um, yeah, really cool stuff, you. Uh, but yeah, does that answer your question, Kiefer? Um, mostly I, I, I only heard bits and pieces of that because there's a weird thing on the line here where it's sometimes you cut out if there's other audio going on, but what I'll just do is just listen I'm back so to this call on YouTube and, you know, I'll just get a ball of it all there. Okay. I'm so sorry. Yeah. The, you're not Play the first person to say there's been an audio issue today. 
Right. We we had issues with the stream. We had issues with the the call in studio before. Now we're having issues with the sound. This is a it. This is par for the course for launching a new show. <laughs> That's right. But no, we have it's lots all good. Of live I, I really appreciate it, and I love listening to. to... Yeah, uh, that's, that's awesome. I, I love listening to both of you go off on tangents about you know your respective fields. So I really appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> You're and, in the uh, right I'll call place. in another time with some more of my questions. If you like most definitely. No one called definitely. to well, ask you so about much, brains, man. though. We we can talk. You know what though? Depending on how. Thank, they, you. thank you so much, Kiefer. I I appreciate you nice, calling Kiefer. in. Take care. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have an awesome day. If you want, if we have time. I bet we can pull something off because I was on another show a little while ago and we were talking about uh, uh, hate in the brain and we were talking about <gasps> specifically like uh, uh, like LGBT hate and, and like homophobia. And I wanted to talk about the insular cortex and how like theocratic dictators and shit can use that to their advantage. So like depending on how this call goes, if we if we if we burn through this oh. in like 15 minutes or less, then we have until 830. So like we can try to pull it off. Um we so, have to read all our the super last chats. caller. I was going to say, also, live chatters, people who are watching live, you could always send super chats with brain questions. Let's do that. That's true. We could try to do that instead. Dude, that's a good idea because we saw the super chats. Um, okay, so I'm going to try to go through this call as quick as, as would be fair. Uh, we have Slave for Christ Emmanuel. I, I, can I call you Emmanuel or can I call you Slave? Uh, uh, pronouns are he, him, calling from Texas. Uh, and he is a theist who says that he finds atheism inconsistent. Can you hear me? And what can I call you that would be shorter than the name you've given us? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I saw someone calling to the show, and they were using titles. And I was like, wow, why don't I use titles? And I just come up with that. And, you know, well, we'll uh, title that I can give the you Bible that I read, you. it says that consider yourself... Yeah, yeah, you just call me. You could just call me Emmanuel. It's fine. It's just like okay, uh, you know, Scripture says, "Consider yourself uh, slaves of Christ." That's why. That sounds okay. Horrific. So uh, I just want <laughs> to ask a couple of questions. Uh, no, no, no. It's like uh, you know, you were slaves of sin. Now you have become uh, slaves of righteousness. You could read uh, Romans six nineteen. So, um, yeah, no I have a couple good. of questions Please for Forrest. Question. Oh, question for sure. Forrest. <laughs> uh, okay, can I ask uh, some questions to for Forrest? By all means. Oh, yeah, I'll just sit here. I'm good. <laughs> Drink my water. Okay, so, you know, you I sound, uh, you know, very smart. Kind of. Yeah, yeah, uh, you sound very smart. It's kind of sad. You don't believe in God, but um, I appreciate the comment. So, got you cool. uh, my question good. is: Do you consider? <laughs> okay, okay. So, uh, do you consider philosophy a science? No, philosophy is just a way of thinking about thinking about things. It's a way of us, you know, understand asking the deepest questions about the universe, but. There are no right answers. It's, it's just how we interpret things around us. There are, of course, like theories in philosophy, but when we use the word theory this way, the, the best way that I've, I you heard, have heard the word theory described <clears throat> was from an, uh, an archaeologist named Matthew Johnson who said that a theory is putting facts in order. So in philosophy, we're doing the same thing as we do in science. We're looking at the facts and we're finding a way to organize them that makes sense. And the difference between science and philosophy is that there's a lot of different ways that you could say makes sense. You know? Okay, so uh, so you're saying that rationality is not applied in science, right? That's no, that's a bait and switch. That's not at all what I just said. That's not at all what I just said. <laughs> you asked if philosophy was okay. science, not if it was applicable to science. Of course, philosophy is yeah. utilized okay. to a certain degree in science. A lot of all a lot the of the time. governing principles around science and how okay. science is engaged were gotten to through philosophy. I literally have a book That's right a here about the philosophy of science. Nobody's going to fall for it today. <laughs> <laughs> this one's called Theory and Reality okay, the I just want to add of Science. That's what that's all about. Did you, did you think either of us were stupid enough to fall for that? Are you kidding me? Is philosophy a science? No. Oh. Carefully detailed explanation. What? Oh, so that means that you think that purple is green. 
Get the fuck out of town. <laughs> Stop it. Do you have a better question than no, that? Okay. Manuel, Come on. What else do you have? <laughs> oh, so what 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 would you consider a contradiction? For example, you know, if I'm saying something that's like different than your argument, do you consider that a contradiction? No, a contradiction means you're saying two things that don't make sense together. Like saying that God is all just and all merciful. Those two things don't make sense in the same breath, you know? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so hold on that argument. So, so contradiction, for example, let me give you an example. Let's say, uh, United States, uh, I'm just giving like, uh, uh, an example. I'm not saying it's literally like that so mm -hmm. let's say united states has a had a constitution in 1920 for example and let's say that united states changed the constitution in 1950 so the, would, would, would you say that one of those constitution is wrong or would you say the system has changed that's called an amendment and it's it's just a thing that changes the system. Absolutely, we we change the laws because laws are all made up. They're just things that we all agree on, and we do. They're not a real tangible thing, so we can change them anytime we want. Also depends on what you mean by wrong in that context. Okay. In this in this argument, if if, if they could, both I assumed be he wrong, meant like factually what wrong. You mean by wrong. Yeah, yeah. I, I assumed mean, he meant actually them. wrong, not morally wrong. But either way, it doesn't make really sense. Uh, okay, uh, let me give you an example. For example, in eighteen uh, in the eighteen hundreds, you know, uh, for example, slavery was legal in the United States, right? So they changed the constitution and made it illegal, right? So, uh, like using that example, atheists usually, uh, you know, the atheists that I meet or agnostics, uh, agnostics that I meet, they say that. You know, scripture contradicts itself. That's why we don't believe in scripture. And I would ask them, and they'll say, you know, God in the Old Testament is different from God in the New Testament. And I and I say that it's not a, it's not a contradiction. No, here's how it, that's it's not. Gonna, let's. I'll give you an example of a contradiction. How many how many yeah. women were at the tomb when Jesus was resurrected? Who was there? Was it Mary? Was it three Marys? Was it one Mary? Two. It was two Marys? Okay. So which gospel did you take that uh, from? Because two. it's different in, a different in in another gospel. And when they ran away, did they tell somebody? Did they tell no one? Because they couldn't have done both, right? Yeah. They couldn't have no, run away no, no, and no, told no. no one. Uh, and I'm they taking the no, gospel no, 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 no. They couldn't have so. done both. You, you, you like examples, right? You like examples of contradictions. So... You're 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 trying to frame it okay. as though the Bible doesn't have contradictions. You're saying the things that people think are contradictions are changes, and I'm saying, okay, well, that's not the reason that I don't believe in the Bible. It's like, I mean, it's it's not <laughs> it's not a tick for it. That's for goddamn sure. But it's not right. the reason I don't believe in it. But that is an example of a contradiction. The women couldn't have simultaneously left the tomb and told no one, and simultane and at the same time left the tomb and told someone. The Bible says that both are the case. It also said that there was okay, an angel in there. Said there wasn't an angel in there. Those both can't be the case. Those are contradictory. There's they both can't be the case simultaneously. There's parts of the Bible where it says there's parts I've of the Bible been, where it says somebody uh, saw heaven. Uh, obviously, you don't read commentary, but God. okay. There's other parts where it says that no one has ever seen God heaven or seen. God. If you look right. in, the, in Genesis, in Genesis chapter one versus yeah. Genesis chapter two, are completely different creation stories. So, like, no, there's lots of immoral, horrible, evil, vile, reprehensible crap in the Bible, but that isn't what we're talking about when we talk about contradictions. We're okay. talking about two okay, things Forrest. that are can't be true at the same time. Okay, Forrest. Forrest, yeah. let me. Okay, by the way, the Forrest. thing that you guys said, you probably don't read commentaries. I don't know why. Uh, the you tomb story is a very theological mistake. Okay, okay let me let comments? me tell you how the the gospel accounts are different. Okay, let let me tell wanna, you like, how what are the you getting at? Like, tell, tell me what actually the point interpreted. Is. It's been a long and winding tell me road the for us to not get to this point. Okay. okay. Yeah, I just I want to know what we're actually going for here. I don't okay, care okay. How the Bible can I explain? About. I have friends who are Bible okay. scholars that can talk to me about that. That's okay. not what I'm here for. So, what are you trying to talk about? Okay. 
No, okay, for example, let's say I went to Austin and I saw two people running around. And yeah. let's say that, you know, you went to Austin and we were at the same time, but we described the same event in a different way because eyewitness is always different from person to person. So gospel, in the Gospel of Luke and Gospel of Mark, it's very different narration because they, these are different so writers. And so they the want to be why, actually no, no, no. Does not, why is there an 80% overlap I'm sorry? between Mark and Matthew then? Like, so Mark is the first gospel, right? Mark, Mark is, is the first gospel that was written. By the way, we know by the way I'm not saying the Bible is infallible. That's not what I'm saying. No, I'm, I'm getting to your point. You said that they're eyewitness right. accounts, but they can't be eyewitness accounts. First, first we know for a fact that they're anonymous. Yes. And second, it doesn't make, and I am not done talking, one second. It doesn't make any sense that Matthew, as an eyewitness, would transcribe word for word what Mark wrote if he's telling his story, you can't simultaneously explain away the inconsistencies as saying the reason those inconsistencies exist is because they're different people. They're both eyewitnesses. They both have different perspectives. And then like, and how do you reconcile that with the fact that why would an eyewitness, if you witnessed Jesus yourself and were walking with Jesus and you were about to write down your account is the first thing you would do, pick up someone else's account and copy it fucking verbatim and just make minimal changes. No, but Mark is actually like 80%. Do have a word for that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Emmanuel, we, we actually have a term for what's going on here. No, so, so, so actually plagiarism. You're, you're... Plagiarism is the explanation for what you're seeing. Yeah, right? yeah. Well, this, but, the scholarship by the calls way, it the synoptic problems. Wait, so you can stop assuming hey, that I don't read By the way, I agree with you. friends who are scholars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, 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 but, but you may... You made an assumption that I was saying the Bible is infallible. That was not even my point. No, oh, I, I, you did, I you did a assumption. Was one of us made that to you assumed that I was the talking. assumption that these were eyewitnesses, and that's what the I, reason for the difference in the stories. I'm not going to let you take me off the mark because I'm listening to what you said. No, Acknowledge what you said. You said that the reason that there were differences but, is because if you were no, in Austin no. and I was in Austin, and we both saw two people running around. That's we not even my argument. We would have slightly oh my different God. perspectives of that happening. That is literally what you that's said. What and you I said, well, said. if you're using that yeah, as an explanation for why okay, there's differences I, I in the gospel, you can't. That's not... Okay. Oh, okay. There we go. Can, we can agree. Talk? There's inconsistencies oh and contradictions. Okay, by the way. And they're not what, first-hand accounts. What, no, that's not even my point. That's not even my point. But you can agree that there's Why'd inconsistencies and they're not first-hand accounts. They're not eyewitness accounts. <laughs> At least Matthew and Mark couldn't both be simultaneously. Mm -hmm. Right? My argument is not about eyewitness. Oh, my God. You're talking about Nobody different... knows what you're arguing about. Okay. Because no. you keep giving what examples of things is... that happen in different towns in the United States be... that don't... Be... But, but you didn't even let me... I did. I think you're going to... I think what, you're going to gear you, shift again. Why don't you give us a... Why don't you give us a thesis statement? Just in one sentence, tell us exactly what your point is. Don't tell us, think about this, imagine that, what if it, just one sentence of, I believe this thing and that's why I'm calling. That'd be so cool. Uh, okay, no, 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 I, I'm not calling for argument. I'm just calling for questions. I just, I just would like to question Forrest because he seems a kind of about, smart guy. That's why I call. I didn't even call for argument. Specifically, what do you have a question? You assume that I argument. What is your question for Forrest? What, you I was asking, asking but you just, you, you, you just. You. Now, now is your time. Specifically, okay. what is the okay. one question can, can you I have? Question? Can I question? God, okay. we're trying to get you to ask it, please. I just asked you, I just asked you, oh my God. I just asked you, if someone is inconsistent and directly contradicting itself, for example, let me give you an example. So, no, no, I no hear examples. a lot of no, specifically. What are you and asking? They say that religious Listen. people. Hey, what are hey, you asking Emmanuel, for? You no, what no I, what I'm asking. Just tell me what you're asking. <laughs> ask him the question. Is please. atheism what do I have a to formless do? religion or not? Whoa! No. <laughs> Not see that coming. <laughs> is, is atheism a religion or not? There's, 
No, there's the answer. The answer is no. I did not Atheism is not coming. a religion. If you turn off the TV, what channel is the TV on? It isn't. It's off. So atheism is not a religion. It's the lack of religions. Atheism is, is, is the same thing as saying the TV is on off. It makes no sense. So it's not a religion. No. Oh man. Bald is we not went a to hair a lot color. Of towns in the off United is States. not a channel. <laughs> yeah, but does it have Okay, but but okay. By the way, I'm just asking. I could ask anything. You so, can ask whatever you want, but you just have you to think that, ask it, dude. You know, we just throw off the name of God. Okay. Okay. Do you think that atheists have a lot of form of religious activities? Like charity. For no. Do we, th oh, no. do we do charity? Some of the, I do. I do a lot of charity. Some people do, but okay. atheism isn't a unifying group. Atheists aren't a monolith. A monolith. Atheism mm. is simply, I don't believe in God. There are shitty atheists. Okay. There are evil atheists. There are wonderful, beautiful atheists. There's everything in between. Not all atheists do charity. Not all atheists do anything. Atheists just don't believe in God. Yeah. Okay. I'd agree. Okay, the, does atheists gather around and congregate and say that there's no God? Sometimes. No. Some of them yeah. do, but there's no Some rule that says that. So, like, sometimes we do a show like this, but this isn't exactly proselytizing. Okay. Sometimes we do have conventions, but it's not like a church. Some atheists never leave the house and talk about it. They just keep it to themselves their yeah. whole lives. It's yeah. not a religion. It's not a practice. Okay. You, see, you told me where you got the idea of like helping the poor. Where did you got that idea? Where did you think people got I'm, that idea? I'm a human being, and I don't think I'm the okay. most important person in the world. And I can see suffering around me, and I want to do something about it. So I do. It really, is that simple? Okay. So where did you got that idea? You're not. You're not giving me an answer. You're just making a statement. The idea that I can understand that other people have suffering that's independent of my experiences, that's called theory of mind, and people develop it around age three. There's a whole bunch of psychological literature about how that works. Okay, okay. Uh, that's funny. Emmanuel, take the <laughs> mic out of your really mouth and stop answer. breathing okay, directly let me ask on you. it. Emmanuel, take the mic out of your mouth and stop breathing okay, directly okay. on it. Thank you. Oh, that's so much better. Okay. Okay, so... So I'm just Whatever, Satan that whatever you did laugh. with your mic <laughs> made it worse. Put it back in your mouth. Please put it back in your mouth. That's now it so sounds like much connection. worse. <laughs> Emmanuel, it always says you call from Texas in the future if you can, because we constantly have connection issues with you. Uh, why don't you call with the phone number instead of uh, through the web caller? Because this has never worked great. It seems like you're usually usually using like a public Wi-Fi at somebody's coffee shop or something, and and that would just improve things a lot. Mm, that would be great because I think you're cutting out quite a bit, and this has gone this has gone so many different directions, and we have to read, and we can't hear you now. Chats. And we have a I'll, lot of I'll super chats a, to read in 20 minutes. I don't I'll think we can even like make it. that much more okay. time, dude. Forrest is gracious. Okay. Just just a little bit more. I'm going to give you like one or two more questions max. <laughs> Are you All still right. there? Where, you lose I, you? I was going to say, I'm just going to let it go here. <laughs> this is... <laughs> we're not doing we're not doing ten second delays. We have we have other people yeah. who when they call them from the web have a delay, but Emmanuel every time Emmanuel calls in, it's like we go from our normal delay is under mm -hmm. one second. Uh Emmanuel has like a solid six seconds. It's like he's it's, in a it's different it's like if, like if I, I can... was in Austin and his computer was in Dallas and both of us <laughs> were talking on the phone in Houston. Yeah. That's what that's like. Is that, By the I, way, I that's a fair example. About some more. It was a lot of fun it, when we actually started talking about things, but I think yes. he accidentally actually swallowed his entire yeah. cell phone at the end. Now he can't. <laughs> so, so one of the issues was that one of the places he was trying to go, he called to say, I, I didn't call in to argue. I just have questions, but he's trying to ask 
questions to try and force you to contradict yourself. And I knew where he was going right. and then never yeah. got to it when he was bringing up the Constitution stuff and the slavery stuff because he's had this fight. I've embarrassed him. Matt's embarrassed him. I think Aaron's embarrassed him. Basically, it's now a rite of passage to on a show. You're a real host on the line once you've embarrassed Emmanuel. Uh, oh. And oh, I believe Emmanuel was headed toward trying with that Constitution thing to get you all to sort of say, like, because you accepted that this hypothetical, I don't know if you noticed he did this. He gave you a hypothetical of a law changing, but not what the law was. And so then you yeah, agreed right. that that's a law changing, not that the old one was wrong and then the new one was right. And then he immediately switched in 1800 slavery without right. then giving you the opportunity to acknowledge like, no, in that specific example, the law was wrong. And he was, I, I think he was trying to build a situation where you would be contradicting yourself if you don't acknowledge that Old Testament slavery wasn't wrong. It was just a change. I think that's where he was trying right. to go. And then you all went yeah, for was, some reason to St. Louis or some shit. But that, that, that doesn't make really any sense, weird. though, because even in that analogy, slavery was always wrong. The law was wrong. Yeah. And it was like made the, like right. That's, so that's not contradictory. And even what, what, like, what I talked about, he asked, uh, can, can we change the laws? And like, yeah, society's changed. It happens all the time. No part of that speaks to whether something is right or wrong. Yeah. It's just a possibility. I can shoot a gun. Sometimes right. it would be murdering somebody. Sometimes it would be part of target practice. Saying I can shoot a gun doesn't mean anything. It, you, you can do that. <laughs> what a weird... Stephanie, you were able yeah. to like, say it this way. And then way. he went so far into the before. weeds, too. Stephanie he was like, well, atheists are off contradictions. Well, there are. What was up with that? <laughs> Yeah. Do atheists have church? Do atheists congregate? Do atheists like what was? What, <laughs> I just saw the towards. So is atheism a religion? Then there was fifteen yeah, minutes was of nuts. us taking so a tour, a road trip around America, <laughs> changing all of so the laws. Strange. Stephanie Helms really? in the live chat said, "Now take Wes, which is a transatlantic specific repeat caller." Oh God! Who's all? Okay. Oh, I'm, just, I'm not going to follow your religion about trans. I'm not going to join your trans religion. You can't make oh me. God. That's Wes. Oh let's, my God. let's do this thing. That do you think people are trying to make him trans? Hey, look at that. That's... Let's pay bills. No, just <laughs> oh, yay, it wasn't. Chats. It wasn't over. It. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't over Wes being trans. It was over whether or not Wes has to respect trans people and use their pronouns and identify them respectfully. God. You can't make. You go. No, I just find. You can't make me be a good person. <laughs> what I like is yeah. nice middle ground. He does the middle ground argument too. Like, let's do a middle ground where. We have the extreme versus civil rights as though, because the yeah. funny thing is when people say middle yeah. ground with abortion, pro-choice is the middle ground because the opposite, the, your, your opposition is the full extreme, no abortions for anybody, which may is everybody, which is uh, uh, being advocated for by that group at large or no uh, abortions except extremely extreme uh, uh, situations is the other thing. So if you want the actual, what the opposite of that would be mandated abortions, which only I'm in favor of. And so the middle ground, yeah, everybody should have one. The middle everybody ground is pro one. choice. Anyway, I always he like does. to talk about, like, I, was, I love going on that. Like, like we should give every single boy a vasectomy. As soon as they're born, they're mm -hmm. reversible. You can, you can yeah. reverse the vasectomy, and when you're ready to have a child as an adult, then you should go have counseling, and when the, the government deems that it's okay, when your doctor says it's okay for you to have children, then we reverse the vasectomy, and then you can have children. And if that situation grosses you out and you think that's insane, shut the fuck up about abortion then. Because yeah. like, that's exactly like it's the same have thing you seen, we're talking about. Oh, have you seen that vasectomy oh. tech? that uh, they were developing and it's literally like almost looks like a tiny little light switch. Like you'd be able to feel around on your balls and turn on and off your vasectomy at will. Where I spent zero that? time looking up vasectomy technology. Oh, I love, I love worry, diving in right now, Jimmy. I love diving into male <laughs> birth control male. and reading the comments of all the men that are like, why should I have to do something to prevent uh, pregnancy? Did, <laughs> did you hear they did a, They actually made a hormonal birth control for men and it was actually very right. effective no and they didn't put it to market because in the like market testing, it caused all the same symptoms exactly. as hormonal birth control for women. Not, and they're like, we can't handle the mood swings and the right. weight gain. And it the, wasn't even as severe. It, it was the same <laughs> list, but less severe. Yeah. 
and, and, and highly just, functional. Absolutely not. And wasn't like, even a question. <laughs> I'm not no. going to have itchy nipples. Oh Are you God. kidding me? Get the fuck out. Absolutely not. As a man, my nipples oh will my be God. itch free. Anyway, here's some super chats. I love me. <laughs> yeah, super chats. Back and back and forth style, well, like like the usual times. Flawless time. transition. Send your super chats in now, five dollars or more, uh, and help us pay the bills. This is why this show is even able to launch and stay on air. We yep. hope. Uh, uh, yeah, do that, please. Thank you. If you want us to say something stupid or ask us a question, now's your chance to spend five or more dollars to have that be the thing that occurs today. Yeah, this is um, Forrest's favorite part of the show because he gets to make it's dumb great. jokes that I have to listen to. <laughs> uh, <I'm- laughs> oh, you know what? Actually, Shannon, I was wondering Don't. if you had an answer for this. What What would you call a thigh bone that doesn't believe in God? A it's a blasphemer. The femur. A blast. A blast. Damn it! I was so That's close. That's hilarious. That <laughs> it's a non bee femur. That's that was that was way too much. That was that the most. I failed. That was awful. I'm sorry, uh, everybody. <laughs> you do it. Okay, uh, twenty dollars from Elizabeth Chris, who says this is going to be fun, and you were right. It was ridiculous. It was over the top and wild. <laughs> She sent that before we were even successfully on the air. This is a person who has faith in our channel. <laughs> uh, we appreciate it. We were By the having way, fun and nobody else even got to see. We call her Liz Chris around these parts, just so everyone knows. Elizabeth Chris is Liz, Liz Chris. No, that's the Liz for Chris. real. That's that's her real nickname. Uh, Thanks. Oh, I love that. The next one. Johnny Repine, and it came to pass that Shannon and Forrest did appear on the line, and it was good. Somebody <laughs> watches. <laughs> Somebody watches Joseph Smith. That's a Joseph's myth for everybody. That's a pun. Uh, that's a, yeah, it's sort of an inside joke over there. All right. Got to be an Xmo to get it. No, it's, that's Love the that. show I do with RN Ra. Uh, we, we joke about the, and it came to pass What's being. That? Yeah. Yes, yeah. Sir. I saw you there the other day, but we do some yeah. chapters where there are 25 verses and somehow 28 uses of it. And it came to pass. But it's not a literary <laughs> fraud. Hashtag not a cult. Hashtag not all Josephs. <laughs> not all Josephs. <laughs> not all Josephs. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, man. Liz Grizz uh, came back and said, yay, it started. Yeah, <laughs> it did. Right? Eventually, it did. That was at about 620. Just was late in half a phone call. <laughs> I'll tell that you all. I, uh. <laughs> My YouTube thing said you're live. And what I think happened was we used an old YouTube preset stream key and it was like, you're live, but not really. I had to literally change the stream key to finally get on air. That was, oh my God. Wah, wah. it was dope. From Steve Button, two of my favorite science communicators in one place. Excuse me while I nerd out layman, layman style. Thank you for what you do. Oh, thank you very much, Steve. That was a compliment for Shannon here. and I. I'm just kidding. Yeah, yes. uh, uh. it's really not directed at Forrest. <laughs> I'm glad that you're here. I'm excited for this show. I, I like a show where I can just like sit down and listen to the other host and be like, "Oh, this is cool. I'm learning stuff." Oh my god! This, this is, is and this also is when Forrest is on. <laughs> uh-huh. this, is the, this is the closest thing I have to friends, so that's what I like about the show. I mean, we've been friends for a long time. Get out of town. Yeah, but now, but this Jimmy called me. I now force you to talk right. to me with money. <laughs> yeah, G- Jimmy called Although, me the know, other day talking about, right? Jimmy called me the other day talking about the show and was just making weird freaking noise in the phone. Like I picked up and he's just making weird sounds and singing and dancing, oh, yeah, just being strange. Change. And then yeah. he stops. He's like, I think that since I haven't actually started paying you, you can't sue me for workplace harassment. That's yet. true. And then <laughs> <he's> going- <laughs> It was, it was, I was, first of all, I think I was seducing him with Al Green. I think it was that it was that that what it was. Was that you or somebody else? (laughs) Somebody this week, I, somebody this week answered the phone and I was just going to say, Hey, I just wanted to go over some stuff before I send you the onboarding info. Somebody who's a close friend for the record before people freak out. And I thought it was you. Did it, did I then go instead of that? Did I then go, I'm so in love with you. Whatever you want to do is all right <laughs> with went me. Internally, yeah. into himself. I didn't read. <laughs> I didn't read the seduction the card out of, of that. 
Forrest, you I sang think, the I second think, verse. What are you talking about? I might have I might have <laughs> been suppressing what you were getting at. I don't know, man. <laughs> no, it wasn't seduction. No. Just just a sheer love for you. Did I send the next one? Is this the next one? No, I didn't. Sorry. No, you haven't. Let me do that. Another one from Liz Chris. Liz Chris, I got all three of your things because we live in a capitalist hellscape. We do, and we don't have to, y'all. We don't have to. It doesn't have to be this way. It nobody says it has to be this way. Things can just be okay. It doesn't have to be this. This is a choice. Poverty and starvation and death are policy decisions, y'all. They are not <laughs> immutable realities in a country yeah. <laughs> that wastes enough food to end world hunger every year. It is a policy choice. We can change it. We it doesn't change have it. to be this way. Oh, man. I just want people to understand that it's all fucking made up. And it doesn't have to be like this. And fucking the, the service model of, 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 of fucking cultural uh, evolution and the capitalist framework, the, 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 the Jean-Jacques Rousseau idea of life being nasty and brutish and short, number one, is taken wildly out of context from what he actually said. And number two, is it fucking real? There's no evidence for it. And we can just have nice things. It's a possibility. It's Force. a possibility. You may say that I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only <laughs> one. Not Celebrities the only ruin man. that song for me. <laughs> Don't, Yo, Gal Gadot man. has destroyed that. Uh uh, would you mind, because we live in a capitalist hellscape as being official Skeptalk line merch, and then it like has the price tag on it, like drawn on it on purpose? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. That's, I think, oh going to have God. to happen. Just And then cue I, I the people in the chat like, ah, you are not a capitalist, and yet you live in a capitalist society and need money to survive. Curious. Mm -hmm. I am very smart. <laughs> <laughs> this is a 1,000% true story. When I first called Forrest about the show, and I was like, I'd love to do this, da, 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 and we'll pay you to host. And he goes, do you think it would pay for a PhD? I was like, I hope. <laughs> I fucking hope. Or did you say grad yeah, school? One of the two. I was like, I don't know. I'd it love was a that. second master's. That's I want a second master's really bad, but I don't have the 50 grand to pay for it. And I'm yeah. not doing another thesis. Fuck <laughs> that. And like that, I could do, if I did a thesis, it'd be paid for, but it would take half the time as a PhD and I don't want to do it. So just, if you can earn me 50 grand on this show and I can get a second master's, I'll be a happy panda for the rest of my life. Be there great. you go. Super chat now. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god! Oh shit! Right, Sorry, god. I skipped the last one. Let me you go back. One. one, yeah, one disappeared yeah. from I T Z Veritas. Okay, it's Forest Veritas. Oh, it's, Veritas. it's... Uh... fair enough. All right, oh, I'm god. awful at reading the names. Forrest saved me from religion. Wow, I accidentally oh started God. doubting my Christian faith while ironically trying to learn more about it. I had my aha moment during his Ask an Atheist Anything Day. That's pretty cool. That's pretty That's awesome, That's immensely bud. huge, and I I That's reject nice. the claim. The, the I, I reject the qualification. I didn't save you from shit. I might have told you some things, but your own mind freed you. Is you? I can tell you whatever I want. You have to think it through. So you saved yourself from religion. I am honored to have been helpful in that. But awesome. you're a fucking rock star, and I'm so happy to hear that you're free. Congratulations. No, I'll take credit. You're Very welcome. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> it's all Jimmy. It's the big voice in the sky. We'll say it's the line. <laughs> all right so, uh, disguise, so we got disguise you... yeah disguise australia i don't know uh <laughs> says i'm so happy to have both forrest and shannon on the line looking forward to r and raw also being on the show thanks to all mm. involved in the line that's really just me but i'll take the thanks thank you so much yeah. i run Can this I... place i do all the things he does i make it all happen yep he broke my, the stream for 20 minutes the, if the, anybody the, else the is streaming ex... software could run CNN that I pay for, that I run entirely by myself. True. I want the me. audience to be as excited as I am for the first person to accidentally not know what they're getting into to call while you and Aaron are hosting together and try to say some shit about <laughs> evolution. Oh, that'll be I a great day. Am, I literally can't wait. I've never been more excited for anything in my whole entire life. 
as the first <laughs> poor soul that accidentally thinks, I'm going to get these atheists. <laughs> Why are there still monkeys? Oh. And calls you and R and Rob all the fucking people. I would, I would <laughs> please let that happen. That. I we'll don't think we'll have time talking. for more than one call <laughs> that week. Oh That's my gonna... god, it would be worth it. It would be an hour and a half. Just, yeah. just, <laughs> just R and I will just both start talking, and neither one of us will stop, and we'll just be talking over each other the whole the, like an hour and a half. <laughs> Jimmy, will just have to take turns muting your like, microphone. Yeah. <laughs> we'll have to stream to two different channels at the same time. <laughs> Colin your will different have hung up forty-five minutes ago, and you're still. <laughs> I can't oh, wait. Yeah. I'm so That's excited. Be great. Uh, would it help me? Would it help you all if for me to try and help keep on track by saying like when I send these ten dollars from Wanted Chaos and then you read? Is that helpful? Yes. Ten dollars from Wanted sure. Chaos. Forrest and Shannon, glad to see you, my armadillos. Also happy to see new shows come to the line. Please give Dylan a pat for me. I will. I will. Thank you. I've got him in the I've other room. I should have gone and grabbed that. him. That's what I wondered. Are it's, we talking about a Dylan that I, okay. We have a mod called Dylan and I, I thought, okay, go ahead. <laughs> uh, I, and think, I think what they're, they're talking about, uh, I have a, I have a podcast. It's the worst podcast in the entire internet guaranteed. It's awful. Um, and, uh, <laughs> At one point, we had a we had a camera set up, but it was like just a, it was a cell phone, and we couldn't get the audio synced up. And then that broke, and so in the interim between having a shitty camera and having a proper camera, um, we just put up a picture of an armadillo over the screen for like the first half of the show, <laughs> and that was like the running joke of the podcast. Um, <laughs> and then now that we finally got a camera. Like the armadillo has come like a, our de facto mascot. So we've got an armadillo plushie on the couch on the thing. His name is Dylan the armadillo. <laughs> um, and I also sell a t-shirt, which is two armadillos sitting on a flaming couch with the word uncomfortable beneath it because a flaming couch is the logo of the thing. And I have people write to me and they're like, I bought your weird armadillo shirt. I have no idea what it's for, but it's funny. So I bought it and I'm like, that's exactly what it's for. There you go. Nobody <laughs> needs, it, needs to listen to this show. It's the worst show in the world. Don't listen to it. No, I want to listen to it. Ten Australian dollars from Disguise Australia. Ooh, uh, got a question for both of you. As science educators, what lessons have you learned about science education, and what advice would you give to someone looking to become a science educator? Um, uh, I would say that the biggest lesson, oh, man, I've got a million of them, but like, I would say meet your audience where they are. Don't talk down to them, but also don't be afraid to overteach. Throw the big words at them and be honest about the fact these words are weird and here's why they're important. Um, just, you know, imagine when you were a young parson and you wanted to be talked to like an adult, but you had to modify it a little bit. So just, yeah, that, that's why I would say don't patronize, always teach with a smile and teach, teach the reality of what you're teaching, not just the, the material, but also how the teaching process works. Um, that's, that's huge, hugely important. It makes you more real, you know? Yeah. Mine would, mine would be, that's great. Communication is super important. I like the not dumbing things down portion as well, but mine would help. What I really think matters is find something that you yourself are passionate about because that becomes contagious. People can Absolutely. sense whether or not you're disingenuous when it comes to what you're what you're trying to discuss with them, they can tell whether or not you're enthusiastic about it and passionate about the subject. Uh, so find something that you really, really are into, like that you know a lot about, and that you really care if other people know about it. Because you're not go you're not going to invest if you don't care if other people know about it, if you don't see why it's important. So find something you're passionate about. Right. Also, uh, uh, we, you know, we doing live things like this or if you're in a classroom or anything like that uh if somebody tells you they're not going to believe you believe them if, if someone says mm -hmm. i'm not you're not going to change my mind believe them don't bother with it um but if you know for sure this is tricky if you know for sure that there is no way you can bring this person in you can spend your whole time trying and failing or you can deliberately push them further, which has no real consequence at all, and use them as an example for the rest of the class, which is a big part of what we do on these call-in shows, 
people call in to scream and yell and argue with us, there's no way I'm going to change their mind. But I can use it as an example of what not to do for everybody else listening. And everybody else learns from their mistakes. You know what I mean? That's that's a thing that you can do if you're like, if you're good enough to notice what that is, because otherwise you're just going to be an asshole. You have to be really careful about it. Ten mm. Canadian dollars from Mario X. Challenge for two of my favorite hosts in the spirit of lighthearted fun. Try to prove flat earth just for shit and giggles. I don't know if I could make myself. That, well, like, let, just, let, <laughs> I don't know if I could. You would have to prove. You would have to prove literally all of science wrong, like to right. be because like flat, like the earth being works. flat would go against everything. Like, like it's not a hyperbole. Works. Everything right. would be wrong if the earth was flat. So like if you can show me, you know, flip dude, I don't know if if, if you can show me where at one part of the earth and another part of the earth, just a little bit north of there, the sun at equinox at the zenith has the exact same shadow. That would be a cool experiment that you could maybe do. That was one of the ways that we knew exactly how round the Earth was back, you know, thousands of years ago from Eratosthenes. He proved not only that the Earth was round, but he calculated the circumference of the Earth within 1% of its actual value in ancient freaking Greece, like two or 3,000 years ago. So if you could show me two shadows that are the same length, hundreds and hundreds of miles apart in different latitudes, maybe that'd be a thing. Uh, but beyond that, I don't know. <laughs> I think it's funny how you're thinking about ways to disprove the existing theory and not oh, doing yeah. what most flat earthers do. No, no, he wanted us to try to prove right. a flat. Yeah, you can't prove <laughs> what Australia most flat exists. earthers do is just assume that theory, just throw that that you know theory right. out because it's just a theory, and then just start building junk science. <laughs> <laughs> right that's that's what it's all that, about all i know is to. somebody in here was named disguised australia was one of the people sending super chats and i think that that is a clear reference to the fact that they're pretending australia exists which it doesn't okay that's fair that's part of yeah. the flat earth if, model if the if earth you don't was know. round australia would exist and it's very clear that it doesn't so australia is obviously a fake it. yeah yeah that's rounder, like, like, they're certain like delaware delaware isn't real but like uh, that's the rounder okay. model. Like yeah. there are and two Dakotas. Delaware. I've never met anybody from Delaware. I've never met anybody who knows anybody from Delaware. It's not Ten. a place. Ten dollars from Mark Beiser. I can't I can't refute that. Uh, I would. Mark I would Beiser. say I wish. Oh, sorry. Oh, it's your. It's, I, I'm losing track of this turn it is because I don't remember. Somewhere. Do you want me to do Jimmy, that? You gotta keep track of that too. I can just read Jimmy, too, you if just you like. do it. We're not yeah, doing a good job. Yeah, you just do it. I, you just do it. Just I love that idea. Thanks. It it makes me feel like I'm giving you the money. Uh, from Mark Beiser, I I would say I wish Forrest was my high school biology teacher, except his parents were probably in high school when I was. <laughs> Jokes on you, fucker! I don't have parents. I don't know, man. <laughs> well, thank you. I appreciate that. By the way, people I'll are... I'll teach that place. The beats. Pe people don't know that you're 58 years old? No. People don't Morris know. is actually people my dad. People always that I'm young. Yep. It's true. It's true. God, now, the I joke was 50, I have. Voice rises so much. It's crazy. Years. I I literally drink lotion. But, like, it's, it's <laughs> that's, I've been 58 for years, and it's it's yeah. only getting better. $30 from a margin. Two of my favorite people. Great seeing you both doing a show. Great to see you too. Thank you. Good nice. to see you, a margin. Thanks so much for People are excited to see us. People are going to be disappointed Thanks to find out that you'll usually not appear together on the show. And there might become, there might be a petition, which be suggests you should be <laughs> maybe once a month. I don't know. Anyway, maybe. apparently people have been asking for the two of us to do a show together. Like, for ages. I've, oh, yeah. I've heard it from yeah. people. We're a popular combination, yo. If availability Aww. had been there, we probably would have launched just this every Monday and done Skep Talk on a different day. But right. the, you guys have lives Sorry. and kids and... Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> $10 from Satan's Little Helper. Why do people not understand causation? Does it apply to energy? Energy is the ability to do work. You can't have causation until you have the ability to work this oh, sounds like, like capitalist that. propaganda <laughs> <laughs> he's got that yes. word work in there that's clearly uh, like what the it. conclusion that led to right. eviscerate the proletariat i like that 
Like, yeah, no, yeah. So it's, it's why it's the same thing we're I'm talking about. Like, what does it mean to ask before the Big Bang? There's so many questions right. that, that don't make yeah. sense in there. Like, what is that? Like, oh, so strange. I, that I like call that point, was frustrating because that whole call was just, I have an answer and that's better than no answer. And it's a nope. <laughs> it ain't. Right. No, I was not. trying to show that that's not the case, that actually yeah. an answer in that instance is multiplying entities. It's making right. the answer more complex. Like you're saying, well, this, the, all of this, and everybody can, everybody can go back and watch it. If you haven't watched it, I don't need to re-explain, but yeah. Yeah. It's like your answer is the word answer. L honestly, like if you yeah. think about it, metaphorically, <laughs> yeah. that's what the answer mm. is answer. Well, no, cause that doesn't answer this. But if I just say answer in response to that, it totally does. So there. Mm. Anyway, we have so many more of these <laughs> yeah. and I'm I'm making this way worse. Uh, so I'm going to... Did I read this one? No. 1999 from Jamie Gallier. I'm so excited to see my two favorite skeptics, skeptic and host with their own show. Congratulations. Love to you both. You know, it's a little hard to read these out. <laughs> this sort of one out where I'm talking about how other skeptics are their favorite hosts. Am I at least your but favorite executive producer? Again. Yeah, you're mine. Thank you. Absolutely. Currently, you are my favorite executive <laughs> producer. In this right moment, now, on this, this moment, show, at when this you're hour. asking me this specific question that I'm so <laughs> comfortable answering, oh, man. the answer is you. I'm going to go drink bleach. Uh, $10 <laughs> from Ice Claw. Do you have any advice for someone reaching 30 and can't afford to go back to college anytime soon, but has goals to get more than one master and doctorate degree, animal behavior being one of them? the internet um study hard and find a lab to work in call call up a university see if you can volunteer in a lab work with the people there um get to know their research get to know what they're working on um that'll give you a huge competitive advantage for when you do have time to actually apply to be a grad student in that area um i was able to get into the lab that i work in now because i found somebody who was doing research that was at least close enough related to what i wanted to do um and i have the background that filled in the gaps in the the people that they had there they had you know people who had this expertise and that expertise and they're like hey we really need somebody who understands these things and i was like that's what i do and they're like great pop in um and so like if you find a, a lab to volunteer in you could even do like a, a work study program to pay off some of your, your classes. Um, also, if you're doing, you know, anything in grad school, there's a significant chance that if you're doing a, a thesis work at a master's level, that you can get a stipend, which will pay for all of your classes and maybe even pay you a little bit of a living expense as well, although they are usually laughably low. Um, but you have to produce work that will be published. Like they want results. Um, and if you're doing a PhD, a PhD is usually free. It's usually paid for by a stipend that pays for your work. You know what I mean? So like, that's the thing with science. Like they want results. They want something to publish and grad students are a great way to get it. Just know that you will not be rich with the money that they give you to live off of. So, you know, it's just, but that's a great way to get started. If you're looking for a place to be, find, you know, a university, look up the research they're doing at the moment. They usually publish like what research areas they have, look up the faculty and what they're working on, write them, write them an email or give them a call, ask if you can come work in their lab as a volunteer or as a work study or as a paid, whatever, and find where you fit. And then when you find something you like and you're interested in, be like, yo, how about giving me a master's if I do this for two whole years, take a bunch of classes, you know, whatever else it is. That That's a great way to do it. Someone in chat replied, no, no, no. "Get a get a job on a Colin show." I thought that was funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, fingers you, crossed. If you're fingers master. crossed, we'll get exactly for us that second do. masters. That's right. Uh, and to the people in live chat asking why Jimmy is on again, I would recommend just go ahead and contact whoever runs the line, the admi <laughs> the admin, and whoever runs the line, and let them know, let them know to put a stop to this. Um, yeah, I already reached out to HR. <laughs> Don't worry, we're all over it. <laughs> In a weird way, you are my HR. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fair, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, the, I'm this operation's moral compass. <laughs> yeah. Well, in a literal way too, but I won't go too in depth. That might be a little doxy. Okay, anyway. that's just for, that's for you and I later. <laughs> that's right. Uh, $20 from Evil Tango. Mother is a believer. Her fave argument is that humans cause all the horrible things in the world and not God. How do I deconstruct that statement without causing the he works in mysterious ways spiel or a heartbreak? I once figured out how to answer this. Well, I figured out a challenge to this when I was super high. 
Uh, and it was literally just like, if God doesn't get credit for the bad things, he doesn't get credit for the good. I have good. a good one. I have one that I thought of the other day, and I fucking love this one. And I'm, I'm still exploring it. But when Theus plant their flag in morality, uh, like what specifically biblical theists that think morals come from God, they in order to believe the whole biblical narrative from start to finish, you have to accept original sin, right? Because fallen world, that's why people suck, blah, 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 blah. You need original sin. But what was the original sin? This is where there's a contradiction for me. You like you can't hold that position. You can't hold the position that all morals came from God and were written on our hearts, blah, 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 and hold to original sin because the original sin was us eating from what tree? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which means that the mm. thing that pissed God off, the thing that made him mm. so mad that he condemned the entirety of his creation forever was us stealing access to right and wrong. He did not, that literally in the Bible is something he did not want us to have access to. Yeah. So yep. when the, yep. so when theists argue, like Christian theists argue that, well, God wrote it on your hearts. No, he didn't. He couldn't have written it on our hearts. We Any morals that we do have, if you believe in that paradigm, we stole. And we stole mm -hmm. them and it made him so fucking mad he had to kill his own kid. So when, the, when theists yep. start talking about like the reason for evil is humans and fallen world and stuff, I ask, uh, I'd like to ask them now, okay, well, what caused the fallen world? What caused the fallen world was us having access to what is and isn't good and evil. And that's just even ignoring the fact that you're punishing people who admittedly had no knowledge of what good and evil was. They de definitionally could not have. So they made a choice that they could not have made an informed choice on, and you're punishing the entirety of humanity for them having access to the information they would have needed to know that that was a bad choice. The whole thing is this incredibly convoluted, contradictory paradigm that doesn't make any sense when it susses out, but people don't question it. So they, so they just say the God wrote it on your hearts, fallen world, but it all falls apart. Like a, a, just a yep. surface level analysis. I'm so tired of you being so much smarter than me. It's so frustrating. You just stop. Stop with your... <laughs> I would always like I, I just go to God being a dick all the time. Like that's where I always try to land on is that this 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 God character is so unbelievably evil. And like what I land on with this is they're saying, well, humans cause the evil things. We're supposedly all his children, and we're supposed to be you know ignorant of right. the greater purpose and the greater good and all these things. They really lean on the whole he's the father and all this stuff. So like if you had kids and your kids were raping and murdering each other, would you step in? And be like, hey, don't do that, and here's why? Or would you be like, you continue, but later on, I will set you on fire? Like, what's the better option of being like a parent, of being a, a, yeah. a person that actually cares about their creation? If my kids were doing something evil, especially to another person, I would stop them and educate them with love and compassion and help them to grow into better people. I wouldn't just let them figure it out for themselves and hurt as many people as they want and then later on torture them. That doesn't like that's that, that whole situation's insane. So like I don't I don't buy that at all. The whole humans are responsible for evil, that that's me that's a complete scapegoat. That's just completely giving away responsibility to somebody else. And what really sucks is when people say, well, it's free will. Number one, yeah. in the Bible, several times God takes away free will. But also, if I'm murdering somebody and it's my free will to do so, what about their free will to not be murdered? Why didn't they get played? You know, what's what's their whole lot in life now? What's that suck? Forest. And what about the fact that like if God controls everything, if God has all control over all the things, then he literally is making certain people for the purpose of them going to hell. He made mm. me this yeah. way. He made the circumstances. Sure, I have free will, but he knows what's going to happen, right? So he specifically made certain people so that they can be tortured forever by him. Like, the, if you try to say that we are responsible for evil in the world, it gets so much worse for God. I'm about to blow your mind for us. Did you know the position you just presented, I'm not kidding, is what Mormons believe was Satan's position before we all came to earth, and it's what makes him evil, that he wouldn't allow people to murder each other so we'd all just go to heaven, and that free will is overrated anyway in that regard. 
Now, don't go telling people that I'm Satan. Because You're Mormon we don't need Satan. To give away the end. <laughs> oh, oh, I've already been doing that. I'm just yeah. shocked that that. <laughs> you are Mormon Satan right a, now. A, 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 a that's major spoiler exactly. alert on your part. <laughs> Everybody, plug your ears. Don't don't listen to the spoilers. That's that's the ending. We won't get to that part for another couple of years. Yeah, Satan's a good oh nickname gosh. for you. I like it. I like Five dollars from River Sticks. Forrest <laughs> Shannon is like the best host combo. Come on, guys. Let's Aww. pitch in to convince Forrest's cheap boss, hi Jimmy, to ship him the cam he deserves. He already bought his own. <laughs> I, he already bought his own. Yeah, I bought one. I, I, I bought uh, the fancy ass Elgato face cam that Jimmy told me to buy, uh, yeah. and it will be here on Friday. So this is the last show that you guys yeah. will see me on where I have the rainbow bars and I have to adjust <laughs> the camera every five freaking minutes. They, I will say, the, the as far as the future of the line goes, parts of Patreon and channel membership on the production end, what goes to production, will be a device, basically a production fund, so that as we bring more people on or existing hosts need to upgrade something or something breaks, we do want to cover those costs for the hosts. We just don't yet have the means to do so. So this is why all of that is very important. You can become an patron and help with those things. Did I say and Patreon? Is that were you making fun of me? No, I said it. I'm just 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 oh. adding into it. So you have the whole saying it too, and like really giving the affirmation. Like go Got support it. us on money. Patreon. Got it. Go I give it. the money we away. Get it. I thought you were making because I, I I will say and in the wrong spot too often. No, uh, no, no, no. Let's see. We've we have more pouring in. So I'm and I'm sorry. This is mostly my fault. Rebus win for us. Going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll get you out of here. We'll get you out. We're gonna okay. we're gonna speed we'll round go. some. Rebus win for eleven sixty nine Canadian dollars. Forrest is the best example of how high one gets with a strong dose of curiosity. He reminds me of the reason for studying biology to build super E. coli that can outlive antibiotics I or know. live in it. Forrest almost killed us all. For <laughs> <laughs> they almost had to write a book about. I actually know from experience super bacteria like, forest created because someone said he couldn't. I know from experience <laughs> that shit's point. happening way too often, and you can watch lots of YouTube videos of biologists who are like, "All right, so this week here's the new super E. coli." The, my favorite one being the one where they prove the evolution into antibiotic resistance by having the gradient. Uh, in a giant sort of oh, yeah. box. Yeah. I, yeah. That was Harvard. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. And you actually watch how long it takes for, for E. coli to become totally resistant. And it's like nine days in this, in Jesus. this, with covered, these pressures. I show that experiment in episode two of the light of evolution, facts and fossils, where we Incredible. talk about all the evidences for evolution and it shows that whole thing. And what's so cool about it is if you look at that, that giant Petri dish that they made, where the mutation occurred and then they were able to propagate out into the bacteria like into the, the antibiotic you can literally draw a phylogenetic yeah. tree over that and you see their evolutionary history in a cladogram awesome. that they made it's so cool it's amazing neo titan ten dollars forest you've filled the passionate science educator hole in my heart that developed Aww. after dawkins turned out to be a prick regarding trans stuff keep up the good work shannon you rock too we do need people like forest in light of dick holes like well, thank you. that means the world to me i'm always happy to fill holes thank you so much <laughs> adam j says sorry uh adam j for ten dollars this team up is always the most exciting thing yay shannon and forrest keep being wonderful humans then we'll try we'll do our best no problem thank you ten dollars from fur guy the foot fetishist from 4chan that's that say that <laughs> Boy, that is a fast. name <laughs> all the whole names on Fur guy, the foot fetishes from 4chan. Uh, do you consider it plausible for Sasquatch to exist? Their elusiveness is consistent with primate behavior, after all. Silverback gorillas and bonobos used to be thought of as mystical creatures, mythical creatures, too. Uh, yeah, I just don't, like, there's, there's not enough evidence for it. And even saying that they're elusive, that's a very big creature to have that little actual evidence for. I much prefer the idea. I think it was Mitch Hedberg who said that I think just Bigfoot is a blurry creature. He's just, he's a blurry <laughs> guy. That's the problem. The cameras are fine. Bigfoot is just a blurry animal. That's all it is. Yeah. But yeah. The no, it, you notice it's the same thing as like when people talk about like rods and orbs and all these other, you know, yeah. mystical things, they tend to have less and less photographic evidence as cameras get better and better. So just, yeah, yeah, they're not. There's, there's not a reason to believe in this thing. Not to mention, like sightings are always consistent with some local mythology. Like Utah, I think it was the f 30s or 40s. 
the sightings went way up because one of the fucking Mormon prophets basically said Cain is Bigfoot. Cain from the Bible yeah. and Bigfoot are one and the same. Uh, yeah, and and then suddenly they were just seeing them everywhere in Utah. Yep. 1169 from Rebus Win. This is for Shannon Q because science in Canada and she slays in every way. And the fact she told us oh. she puts on makeups on a Monday for this show. This is the best premiere. Hashtag okay. make the line a podcast. Hashtag follow the line on Patreon and we will. So many people asked if this was going to be on Spotify or Apple Music or like a bunch of people asked me and I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I would say right now our goal is once we get 250 patrons on Patreon, we should be able to convert most of the shows and and hire like an audio engineer part time to be able to remix them and everything for us. Because uh, cool. you do have different considerations in audio only formats, like whether to turn my channel off completely. I need a, an audio guy to go out here to, to Oklahoma and like make sure that my stuff isn't stupid because I don't know what I'm doing. I, I, I can, an audio I can do an awful lot for you in that realm. I can help you a lot without, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just can't do literal audio mixing. Um, not well right. anyway. Five dollars from Paula Gina Gio. Well, what's on Shannon's mind oh about the brain? Oh, so many things. So many things. I'm <laughs> I there's not enough time to go into all of the things about the brain that I've been listening to lately. I'm enjoy I'm enjoying reading books about the brain right now. I'm rereading Thinking Fast and Slow right now to give myself a review of system one and system two thinking. So that's what I, that's what is on my mind currently about the brain because it's been a couple years since I read Thinking Fast and Slow and that's just such a good book and I got away from it and more into like nuanced like micro level neurology and I wanted to kind of get a little bit in the weeds broader yeah, yeah. well I just oh. kind of wanted to get a little bit broader and more uh, like applicable to weeds. to to cognitive theory. So the, I'm rereading Thinking Fast and Slow. So that's what's on my mind. Thanks, guy. You already know this stuff, though, because you live in my house. <laughs> is it true, <laughs> that, house. Is it true that some <laughs> brain cells are with you basically from, from like birth to death or that once they are created in the brain, they don't ever get replaced like every most other cells in our body? Mm, no, really. I don't think so. I would have to look that up. I mean, I know I that there's like a critical period between mm. zero and three, and then like for language acquisition, it would be all the way up to eight that you're laying down the groundwork. But I don't think the cell. I don't know. I'd have to look that up. Actually, I don't know I, enough to help me. Yeah, so, so I'm disappointed neurons in myself. don't Not divide. Neurons don't divide. That's why you know nerve damage is permanent. But like there is a part. If I remember, I'm trying to look it up right now. I thought there was like some part they of the exist brain as that is can. in the same form. No, no, they, they like, grow like in, as you develop, but like, and they also, and they grow, like they stretch throughout your lifetime. They, they continue to develop, but like they don't divide and make new cells. But like there's, there's certain, I could have sworn like, and, and what's crazy about it is it's, oh, that's not how you spell that at all. Um, brain. It, it comes a lot. Well, there's down a calling to, period, though. Like I, I yeah. know there's a calling period. I know it, like it comes up in developing. debate circles there's, a lot about moving your consciousness out of the human body, whether it actually be moving or a copy and paste. But you actually technically killed the host. There's a well. Once the pathways are laid down, they're laid down so there's, until they're destroyed, and then they well, the plasticity is a thing, though. So that's well. Same this guy's saying that there's exist. some. The brain's areas is not limited to just two areas. This is from uh, who is this guy? This is from UC San Diego Health. Um, but like apparently, like there's some evidence that like in the amygdala, hypothalamus, and the olfactory bulbs, it can. So like, you got that whole rhinocephalon going on. But like mm -hmm. apparently, there's new stuff that it could be in other places that I haven't heard about. But like as far as I know, nerve just in general, like generally speaking, nerve cells don't regenerate they don't they don't divide after you're born um and what's cool about like to think about is that like you you have nerves if you think about all the nerves going if you stub your toe how many nerves are involved in that the go, nerve going from your big toe all the way up to your spine all the way up to your brain and you're like oh fuck that must be ten thousand of them going it's three nerves can be several feet long yeah, like a, the nerve from gross. your toe all the way up to your spine is one damn nerve um yeah. and like if you look at your sciatic it's like 
as thick as your thumb and, and it just branches off, but it's one consistent axon that goes the whole way. And so like you have the, the one that goes to your spine, then you have the spinal thalamic that goes to your thalamus, and then you have the thalamus, uh, the thalamus out to wherever else, but like it's a uh, th- th- thalamic cortical. I, I don't remember, but like, yeah, that's, that's like, yeah, it's, no, it's crazy cool how delicate should... they are because they're so massive. But there's still, there's plasticity though. So I don't know what, if you mean by like cells dying in the brain, like, they can, they can be re- plasticity purpose. they can rearrange like, but they can't they can't it's not even rearranging like they can be repurposed because like have you ever read the book the brain that changes itself that's a really no. good book it's it's all on neural plasticity like the history of research on neural plasticity and i've, I've recently read that up. book it's super fucking cool and it actually came to my mind because you were talking about the nerves so there were studies that they did on like i think it, it was some sort of primate that um the nerve in the hand was cut and they mm-hmm. would, they, ch- they were checked, they had already mapped the, like, this nerve and this nerve. And they would do mm. stimuli, like, at, at recurring visits, they would do stimuli on the back and the, the path from the damage point still existed. So the bottom part of the hand or the top, which, whichever one, whichever one wasn't cut, was using that space because your brain is in a constant fight for using up all of your energy resources, right? Because you only have a finite amount of resources. So if an, if another resource becomes available because it's no longer getting a signal from elsewhere, it's going to be repurposed. So plasticity hmm. is super cool. Like, That's dope. The brain that changes I mean, itself. Yeah, you should read that book. That 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 tracks with what I was like, what I've been taught. But like, there's a little bit more context there that I didn't know. So That's really important. Uh, oh, by the way, you should check out. There's a guy named Dr. Ben Ryan. He goes by Dr. Brain, but it's spelled B R E I N. Oh, that's uh, He's on TikTok. <laughs> I, he's awesome, dude. He's a he's a PhD neuroscientist from Stanford, and he's doing awesome research on autism right cool. now. And like the way he can just break shit down, oh. so freaking cool. He's a good. He's a friend of mine. I'll send you his stuff. He's a really cool guy. Yes, I think please. you'd find him fascinating. I would yeah. love the fuck out of him. $20. Uh, now I'm going to be the reason that we're going to be here for the rest of my life. I'll, okay, sorry. That was technically sorry. my fault. I just wanted to come up with a cool brain question. $20 from John Keeling. How are instincts encoded in DNA? Is specifically something as complex as some birds mating dances? Oh, uh, that all comes down to what we call the Baldwin effect. So um, you, you, have a, you've got, you have an entire tweet about, length of amount of time to explain this. In a tweet. Shit. Go. Uh... Think about the, <laughs> the genetic, the genetic disposition to be able to learn things. So if you can learn a specific thing really good, you're genetic. You're so genetically predisposed to learn one specific thing super quickly and super well, then it would look like you didn't learn it at all. Does that make sense? Like that's that's yeah, that's the it. summary of the Baldwin effect. Yeah. Is that you you have encoded behavior by the propensity to pick up that behavior on a genetic level if that makes any would sense language I could go into acquisition detail, be one of those things like yes. would language acquisition be one yeah. of those things okay that makes sense yeah that sounds totally. right that overlaps yeah. with a that's lot why of what i know have... about language acquisition and that's why we have you know like dedicated centers for that and also we have you know consistency yeah. in like when language learning happens like for example babies tend to start babbling around nine months and fun fact mm-hmm. deaf babies start babbling in sign language at exactly the same time around nine months <laughs> and sign language is encoded in the same part of your brain as the primary language in a hearing baby would be um, what a so, tweet. Yeah, super a, cool thing it's from that other a book whole bunch oh yeah from like the that brain that called? changes itself it, the brain, no, it's still from yeah. the same book, from the brain that changes itself. They're, they're talking oh, about shit. language acquisition and that as an ev- and as evidence for plasticity, because j- if you learn during mm. the critical period, uh, like if you teach a child yeah. to be bilingual during the critical period, they can learn both languages without an accent, and you can see exactly where in the brain it's learned. You, you're fluent. basically yeah. incapable of learning an a- learning another language without an accent, and not only that, after you go past that critical period, it's learned by an entirely different part of the brain. Like an entirely uh, exactly. different part yes, of the brain. A, a different center for a second part of the brain, yes. And it's yeah. it's because when for you're learning language, language at the beginning there in that critical period, everything right. is new. And then after you mm. pass that, you already know this, you've read the damn book, but I'm betting it's, yeah. I haven't read this book, but I'm betting it says that after that yeah. part, you're no longer learning enough new language for those, those neurons to be new, uh, useful there. It so they prune way. and go elsewhere. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So they prune and go to other things that you're learning like math or whatever, right? <laughs> right, you're learning in, in, in entirely different centers of your brain are being utilized Precisely. instead of the language area. You're repurposing an area that that may be affiliated with some sort of memory task that or yeah, or dude. like 
perception of an environment around you. Like it's it's just repurposing other areas anyway. I am the problem. Yeah. Ten dollars so from Zenful Para, <laughs> Zenful Pariah. Forrest, can you shed any light on me regarding the observation that exodermal layers severely inhibit evolutionary change, as seen in anthropods, true reptiles, turtles, etc. Never saw a paper on it. Tweet length. Uh, a tweet length. And you mispronounced a lot of things. Uh, this <laughs> man. No, uh, because they don't oh, really, arthropods. they don't limit I that. See. Yeah. Arthur. Yeah. Cause they, so like having like an exoskeleton or whatever doesn't severely inhibit evolutionary. Uh, what, are, what are you talking about there? Cause like, it, remember evolution acts on phenotype, not genotype. So the genotype produces the phenotype, but there can still be variation in there that doesn't necessarily get selected for us. So you can still have variation and as long as it's changing the phenotype. It's the, the, those, those extradermal layers, I'm assuming you're talking about an exoskeleton, they're still going to be like functional. Let me just really quickly. Nope, got to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Max. <laughs> Forrest and I are both like, no, I, but we want to show the people the things. Okay, go ahead. Go, go ahead well, I'm just, I'm trying to, like, I've never heard that term when you're referring to animals like that. Like, usually, like, an exoderm is like a plant thing. So I'm seeing, like, maybe I miss, maybe I miss something. Maybe I don't understand what they're saying. Maybe they just misspoke. But, like, from what I'm, like, that sen- that question didn't make a lot of sense to me from the way it was asked. I, like, the, the, I, I've never heard of that being a limit or a barrier to evolutionary change. We'll just blame um, me it, and, it, and keep going. Talking about it. Was by me. Yeah, the, the, yeah, it's how I said it. Ten dollars from Sarah Die. I'm a big fan of you both, or I'm a big fan of both of you and Jimmy. I am currently reading the Brain That Changes Itself by Norman <gasps> Doige about the findings hey. regarding neuroplasticity. Are you aware of it? If so, thoughts. This th- we answered it before the chat came in. <laughs> there you go. Yes. We're all about it. You may have yes. to. I just finished that book. That's I did not see that super chat. That's hilarious. That's awesome. That's perfect. Five dollars from Mr. Monster. Happy to be here for the first episode of a new show. My question is the is if the Bible is proof of God, is the Iliad proof of Zeus asking for a friend, lol? In the same <laughs> yes. way that that New York and uh, is proof of Spider Man, right? Yeah. Uh, Ten dollars okay. from J. Ja, spoken J. I assume that's how you pronounce that. Get a potato for watch of you, Jimmy, too. I don't know. The potato. I know who the potato is for. Thanks, Thanks, Jay. (laughs) Cyberhex. Oh, is that a get a potato for each of you? Like they're giving us a love potato? Hell yeah. Each. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. I was like, what the fuck is watch without a T? Thank you. Oh, yeah. $10 $10 from Cyberhex. Bribe to see more cool stuff on Forest Shelf. Great show. You can show, but you can't say. <laughs> <laughs> no more talk. We are, no we are not even talk. half. We're halfway done with Super Chats, just so you know. That's what I mean. There I you go. I have to pee so bad. Is that a Pokemon hat? Am I Dun- was I right boom, about that? Boom, boom, boom. Showing $10 nothing. Pokemon badges? That's right. That's right. These are my Indigo League badges. From the first series. $10 and from... League? That's right. $10 okay. from Caleb... Okay. Leagues, yeah. Caleb Umek says... Okay. What made multi-level <laughs> selection theory fall out of favor with evolutionary biologists? Tweet length. I'm going to pee. Go ahead. <laughs> I can't take off your time. Go pee. That's, that works. Hold on. Let me... Did you hear the question? What made multi-level selection theory yes. fall out of favor with evolutionary biologists? Uh, okay, so let me just double check here to make sure I'm talking about the right thing. God damn it. Um, so multi-level selection theory focuses on the phenotype. It looks at levels of selection directly a- a- acts upon, right? Social norms can be ar- argued. Oh, that's what you're talking Oh, okay, yeah. No, I thought it was something different than it was. I understand what you're saying now. Um, as far as I know, there's, there's, like, there's still, like... <sighs> so what you're talking about here, tweet length. Don't think about levels. Think about dimensions. Think about That's great. Um, epig- epigenetic changes, behavioral changes, human environmental interactions, not just humans, uh, uh, but, but uh, um, the extended phenotype, right? Um, 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 uh, behavioral evolution. Think of them as dimensions, not layers. Mm. Tweet length. Hope that helps. 
Uh, that's not good enough. But you don't, you man. don't, you don't really tweet, do you? Twenty dollars from Squid read, Super Hunk. Read this. Read <laughs> this. Evolution in Four Dimensions by Nina Jablonski and 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 uh, uh, Marion J. Lamb. That's a great book that covers a lot of different things. It's a little bit contrived. There's some parts of it that, like, they kind of go real hard into, like, an, like analogy and, like, hypotheticals. But, like, they get the point across if you can stick with them. And, and this is a better way, rather than saying, um, like, a, a, a genic level versus an intergroup <laughs> level versus an individual level versus a... It's just, like, all these things are happening at once. You We're know what switching I mean? to vine all, length. <laughs> no longer tweet length. We're going I... down to vine length. <laughs> uh, Twenty dollars from Squid Super Hunk. Love seeing more of Forrest and Shannon. Here's so many more shows in the future. Love Cheers. both of your work. I love these two also. Thank you so Jack much. Water. Twenty dollars from oh, Eric God. Mishima at Shannon Fergal Burgle Minergal Burgle. I think this is meant no, to I say can't. that Shannon should say it. Fer Ferg. <laughs> I can't. My brain does. Fergal, 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 Man, Urgal, Burgal. That I did. I I did it right. I think so. I was going to say, do, do you want it? do you want me to say it and you try repeat the audio instead of the reading it? Fergal, Fergal, Burglar, Fergal, Fergal, Burgal, Fergal, Fergal. There we go. I was so close. Good enough. I was really close. I scared the it dog. Like the dog's trying to see if I'm okay. Just scratching in the door. It sounds like a fantasy <laughs> racial slur. It sounds like something horrible no. you'd hear someone it's say. It's a word like Matt D &D. made up. I can't wait for him to hear. Yeah, this. it's a Dillahunty <laughs> phrase. I think you're probably in trouble now. <laughs> I'm really looking forward to the group chat later. <laughs> I, I might, I might run the line, but I can't protect you from the Dillahunty. <laughs> Twenty dollars from never Jeffrey. See him no. Twenty dollars from Jeffrey Ulrich. Uh, I hope that's how you say that. Cheers for my two favorite YouTubers. Can you address the oh. biologist aspects of gender slash trans people? Biology for Forrest, brains for Shannon. That's Boy. a whole show. Yeah, it's a whole show. Yeah, it's a whole, whole show. Uh, yes. Vine length. Yeah, yeah. Vine length, sex and gender are different things. Sex is a biological construct. Gender is a social construct. Neither one of them are truly binary. There's a huge amount of different things that go into sexual differentiation. There's not one single template that works on every single organism. And even when you're talking about humans, there's not just two single options. And gender is, by definition, not possibly to be a binary thing because it is culturally constructed. Um, and that is not woke ideology. That's motherfucking science. And I can prove it. Um, I have, I, I actually, because of one of the last shows I was on, I actually marked places in like three different textbooks behind me here showing that, that I'd be happy to bring up if you want. Yeah. Let's from a brain perspective. There's, this isn't the only thing, but there are, is some evidence that on like it, whenever something is a spectrum, that means that there's places in between. It's not a binary. So keep that in mind before mm -hmm. I say this, but on measure, for the most part, when we look at scans of like male versus female brains, we see a lot of what's called myelination, which is white matter in the brains of women, which is like the interconnected axon tissue that's like surrounded by a myelin sheath that communicates, uh, especially over the corpus callosum from one side of the brain to the other. We see a lot more myelinated tissue in female brains on measure not always but there is some evidence that in people who are transgender uh that are male to female that there's some evidence that they on measure have more myelination than you would expect from a cis male which leads you to believe that there is something from a biological perspective regarding the constitution of the neuroanatomy of trans people that like that's one point like it it would take me forever and a half yeah. to unpack even just that statement. <laughs> and we don't have the time. But yeah, we could, Forrest and I could probably both talk about that for an exceptional period of time. Forrest is so good at so many things that I'm glad to know he would have failed as a Vine star. <laughs> six <laughs> seconds is Vine. <laughs> not, not cool enough. Six. That's, yeah, Vine was six seconds back in the day what can you, what can you even do in six seconds uh kim wilson smiled and Hi. five dollars from quagma tv nice. i've been deep into learning about slime molds lately they're basically unionized amoeba lmao 
That's right. <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> you can uh, do really cool experiments. Um, like in Japan, they were uh, mm-hmm. they they have like the super efficient railways, the the, the like the subway type things. Um, mm-hmm. They took a plate, a growth plate, and put little bits of oats, little food, in the locations of cities like a map, and they put a slime mold on there, and the slime mold built a connection between the cities that was actually more efficient than their railway system. It was a, the, the connections and everything. Mm-hmm. Where it, they, they solved like the traveling salesman problem real well. Cool. Um, super duper cool animals. Or not animals, but Wait. creatures. Thirteen ninety nine from Narcan 2K. We need a call-in show like this where people can call in with their myths about neoliberal capitalisms and hosts can set people straight. Yeah, I Forest know. Is gay yes. right I was gonna say I. Oh my God. I already offered Vosh such a position years ago, and he was not down. Not nobody he ever he wants to have talk time. about Marxist theory or mm. anarchist theory with me, and it makes me sad. Just mm. like nobody ever wants to talk about pathophysiology with me. I could go on and on and on about fucking atherosclerosis, and nobody wants to hear it. It's important. Kim Wilson, who had, who had smiled, says, "Oops, my super chat didn't go through." Haha. <laughs> Forrest, who's your favorite Pokemon, and why is it Eevee? Uh, it's not Eevee, because Eevee's lame. My favorite Pokemon is Diglett, who is the best Pokemon. I think He's awesome. Diglett, Eevee would have been assumed because you're an second. evolutionary biologist and they have such variation. No, it's Diglett because he's radically cool. Uh, close second is Doe Duo, but, but Diglett is, is the best Pokemon there ever was. He's awesome. Mine's Alakazam. I always get a Diglett, and I always name him Archimedes. He's great. Have you seen the new Diglets? It's I think it's called Wiglet. There's a new version in the new With game. The hair? No, 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 no. That's that's the oh. Diglet alt. There's Wiglet and Wug Trio. The, the Alola. They're sort of water versions. They kind of remind me of those little um, eels that aren't eels. The little snakes that little garden snake eel things. Anyway, uh, Jen right Lemaster says, "Great show." Twenty dollars, Jen. Uh, sorry, fucking my brain. I just. Topped around. Great show. Love the biology lesson and really love Shannon going off regarding abortion. I think we all love that and it's going to be a clip. So good. So good. <laughs> 1985 from Avery. I love the work of everyone involved in the line. Hashtag Team Mayo. No. Mayo. <laughs> I'll pass Man, that along. Sucks. I'll pass that along to team. Katie. <laughs> uh, $5, no mayo. $5 from Andy Placeris. Just because I pay you for your services doesn't diminish our friendship. It, it, it kind of does, though. <laughs> that's the thing is, at a certain point, now I have to treat them more professionally, and that's my nightmare. I uh, so mad. If he didn't if he do that, that, it would definitely diminish our friendship. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, I was stupid. I was friends with him for years before anybody paid me. <laughs> the trade-off <laughs> is... Operations wrong for us. <laughs> the, the trade-off is now you regularly talk to me. $20 from Larry <laughs> Fishman. <laughs> the decisions that set American on set America on a course for decline in human civilization on a path to collapse before 2100 were made over 50 years ago. And our entire political system is based on keeping those decisions in place. I don't know about the predictive aspect of that, but like the general feel. Yeah. Um, the, the, we, we, we have a system in this country, especially really in the entire global North, but especially here, um, you know, you hear people talking about woke or whatever like that. It's uh, it, we, we have the, heteronormative, uh, 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 white supremacist, patriarchal, misogynistic hegemony, and anything that goes against that, anything that isn't white, straight males with money, uh, that is a bad thing in this country. So, like, yeah, no, I, I can dig that, because that's the entire, like, system that we have, is keeping that in place. If it makes, them, if it really makes Larry blows. feel better, we're going to die way before 2100, because... That whole we need oh, to yeah. fix everything climate wise before twenty twenty eight. We already passed it. It's we're so fucked. It's literally like Capitalism. yes, everybody needs to change what you can change, and we need to change all these things. But we literally have to invent new technologies for disasters that are definitely going to happen. Uh, be already yeah. in in place. Whether we change everything tomorrow, yeah. capitalism is the root cause of climate change, y'all, and it That's doesn't fair. have to be this way we have all the technology we need to completely like revolutionize the energy industry and have no more carbon emissions and clean up the environment and feed every we have the technology to do all the things that we all agree we need to do just you know come on now (laughs) 
I survived a tornado last month, uh, and I now refer to it as my first tornado because that's that's the reality. It's going to be the first. This is this is the world we live in now. Jeffrey Ulrich, ten dollars says, "Forrest, you may want to reconsider your idea on Hobbes. Siding with Locke in that debate leads to dark places like libertarianism." Oh. I agree. I don't side with Locke either. I should have been more clear. I, I'm not a fan of either one of them. I, I just now yeah, I'm not not a fan of their whole thing. And Forrest isn't self satisfied enough to be a fucking libertarian. Oh, shots no, fired! Absolutely not. Twenty dollars from Abel Medina. Skibbity skibbity do. <laughs> yeah, worth yeah. every penny. No, I love that. Like, love no. <laughs> skibbity wap pa pa. Twenty dollars from Armagen. Funny story. I made an evangelical's porch light flicker by telling them about hyenas and their matriarchal society. The pseudo phallus part drove him crazy. Yeah, dude. You know what's really crazy about that? So for those of you who don't know, female hyenas run the society and female hyenas have a fully erectile pseudo penis. Um, And uh, uh, what's really cool is that male hyenas get picked on and bullied and all this stuff by the females and it turns them on. Uh, uh, actual like fear responses in male hyenas result in erections. Being attacked and terrified causes them to have an erection. And so female hyenas actively, aggressively dominate the males as a part of their society and also in order to propagate the species. How cool was, is that? That is born their the wrong species. species. With dominatrixes. Dominatrix I? Dominatri. Domin, Domini? I don't know. Five alleged dollars from CJN. That's what I now call Canadian alleged money. Yeah, alleged. <laughs> it's, it's from Canada. I'll we believe it when the check money. clears. <laughs> <laughs> Son of a bitch. <laughs> Why love am I you. here? <laughs> <laughs> it, it ain't because you love me. Love you guys. Is there a possibility of Forrest and Aaron Ra hosting a show together? I'm surprised it yes. hasn't happened yet. Yeah, yes, I, yes, I see yes, a reason why. Yes, please. It's, 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 that son of a it's bitch will return my calls. No, well, maybe yeah, if, we're, we're probably going to do it. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. We got availabilities. Okay. Um, he just watched. I just sent him my 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 evolution series, and he he said he would recommend it. So, like, maybe we can do a thing about that sometime. Cool. Ten dollars from Domo Mojo. You three, Aaron Ra and Matt Dillahunty, are the reason that I am still on this pretty cool rock in space, Jimmy. Specifically, because I grew up a Mormon, this is the least I can do for saving my life. All right, you oh my saved gosh. your life, but we're all glad to be a part of that journey. Absolutely. Yeah. We're glad you're here. There's a pretty good Mormon call at the end of yesterday's episode of Sunday Show if you want to check that out. Yeah, I think it was, if yeah. you're looking through it, was uh, someone named Mary will be the title on screen. Um, We're happy you're alive, dude. Keep doing that. Mm-hmm. Keep being that. And, uh, it is true. Ten dollars from Wonder She Her. Okay, I will talk about SQ Shannon Q. Like Forrest talks about Bio. It is unbelievable how she <laughs> handles the toughest callers. Isn't it awesome how she's just so intelligent and a joy to listen to at the same time? I agree. Thank you wholeheartedly. <laughs> That's very That's kind. That's very kind. I don't take compliments. Good. Ten dollars, Brent Poo KC, Shannon and Forrest, the Go Team. Woo! Hell We're definitely yeah. going to have to do like this that. together. There's going to be some sort of riot. <laughs> That's right. There'll be a revolt. <laughs> Uh, to figure out how to coordinate it. By the way, we hit 74,000 subscribers on this channel at the beginning of the show. And so if you hit subscribe, uh, you can be a part of the first 75,000 as we try and close out a goddamn silver play button on this channel. One that it deserves Ooh, far more than any project I've been a part of so far. Uh, get, get it for this one. We'll send plaques to everybody. Plaques for all. That's right. No, I love that. My, my kid I would, would lose that. his goddamn actually... mind. <laughs> I'll okay. put it next to the. I'll put. I'll just make a wall of the. As I have a spot on the wall behind me in my studio for plaques, and I've got the silver one now, but I've got this big gross mark on the wall behind me, and I want to put the play button over that. So every the, the gold one. So like every day that mark pisses me off. Every video I put out, people comment on the mark on the wall, and they hate it, and it drives them crazy. It drives me crazy too. I leave it there to frustrate me and to motivate me to make more videos and cover the bitch up. So, Jimmy, you can give me one. I'll put it there, and I'll I'll help things along. You know what I mean? Hell yeah. $20 from Jamnick06. So happy to see the two of you on the same show. Forrest, what second master's degree would you pursue? 
Oh, just biological science with a stronger focus in evolution. Because right now, my ma the master's that I'm finishing at this moment, uh, I'll be publishing my research and graduating in the, the spring. Um, and that is in bioanthropology. So I'm focusing on human evolution. Um, but I want to just cover like more evolution in general, especially like just kind of looking at multiple dimensions. And also, if I can, looking at, at, at sexual, uh, like 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 uh, uh, the evolution of sex and um, uh, sex differentiation and intersex conditions and, and just how cool. varied that is. Because that's something that the world needs right now. And like, while it's not exactly my area of extreme interest, it is something that the more I know about, the more people I can help in this particular climate. So like, that might be something I would lean into pretty hard. Um, and what's cool is that I could finish that master's You're in like so a year. so bad at this. <laughs> Maybe a year and a half. You could have just said the name of the degree, and we'd be no. It's because my current thesis is all about paleoecological reconstruction. I could just expand that. The next time we I read take Super Chats, I'm research. going to get a case of beer. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> like a pillow. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna put on my snuggie. I'm gonna get comfortable. <laughs> Ten dollars from Citizen Gold petition. No, there will be a riot. That was the uh, petition for the two of you to come back together. <laughs> That's right. Sorry, Jimmy. Prove it, bitch. No, I get it. Riot for us. Riot, right, 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 right now, liar. <laughs> Die for me. Die for oh, me. Bullshit. <laughs> hey, Bob, y'all had a riot on account of no, me? No, fucking lies. <laughs> $10 from Andrew Pohl. Why don't more animals die after reproducing? Doesn't it make sense for the genes to make way for the new after they've been passed to the next generation? Is there a video on this anywhere? Vine length. Lots of species do. Lots of species do, but also you can reproduce more than once, so it isn't always necessarily helpful. So a lot of species find ways around that, which is why you get things like uh, seed dispersal, where you have fruits that are brightly colored, so they get picked up by birds, they get shit out other places, so that you don't have to compete with your kids. So there's ways around the situation to allow you to reproduce more than, more than once, which is beneficial. Nicole That's as short K as I could possibly make it. Was that okay? I nailed it. You nailed that. Nicole K. Erbson, who, fun fact this week, almost convinced me to dye my hair blue, uh, says, Forrest, do tardigrades have anything in common with mammals? Much love. I love tardigrades. I'm pretty sure this is the person that made that dope-ass fan art that I got on my, my Instagram right now. This, this oh, profile hey. picture looks familiar. Um, but, uh, yeah, uh, so it, in common with mammals, the only thing they have in common with mammals is that they're both animals. and They're, they're in a completely different phylum. So, like, all mammals are going to be in the phylum chordata, and so you've got, like, the 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 split when we do taxonomy is domain phylum so they're in the same domain animalia but that's it they are as closely related to us as fucking jellyfish and shit like they that's where the split is um also fun fact uh, tardigrades are in the phylum tardigradia easy to remember <laughs> yeah. um but yeah that's the they, they look like animals but they're they're not or they look like mammals like little weird pigs but they're they're not they're very not i i i will i'm gonna bring up a single point of contention with Forrest here, because I can answer this as far as anything in common with mammals. Uh, I have the same body type as a tardigrade. All right, moving on. <laughs> can you survive in you space? Legs. I said Only body legs. type. I'm just talking shape here. Uh, <laughs> $10 from Cy Not Fi. Amazing show. Can't wait to see more. P.S. Did Forrest ever finish Chameleon Twist 2? Ben and I are getting back together this week. We've already got a scheduled day to do it. We've been off for like over a month now and we're going to finish motherfucking Chameleon Twist 2 and bring back the regular audio and video podcast. We're going to do them both. We're going to start having like maybe two 30-minute episodes. Uh, also, Zefrank, one of my favorite YouTubers, did a whole thing about hard grades and he said that you can tell they're water bears if you need to tell the difference between a water bear and a regular bear. Just ask it if it's a bear. And when you do, if your mouth fills up with water, you're an idiot. And that's how you know <laughs> <laughs> 1999 from james kraus who the f is jimmy and shannon and forrest are killing it amazing minds amazing content i'm more used to the question who the fuck does jimmy think he is but i like it i'll take it we don't even know how he managed to get here really <laughs> take it up with, take we it up with corporate. hearing his voice yeah crazy take it up with corporate uh <laughs> Nicole, uh, $20 more from Nicole K. Herbs. And Shannon, does it indicate something about my psychology if I picture my late sibling as they were when I think of them versus picturing them the age they would be now? Thanks, much love. This is an interesting question because 
I still can't stop thinking of my my living sister who is married and has kids. And yet if I think of her, uh, like even like think of her, maybe she wrote a message saying, you know, I'm taking the kids to the zoo. My mental picture of her is still where I knew her the best, which was about 16 years old. I'd, I'd say she's frozen as. Memories are stored in nodes. So I don't know that it says anything specifically about your psychology. It just probably it tells me that when you recall that person, um, the memory that you have of them, like the strongest connection of memories you have to them or the best encoded component of memory that you have of them is attached to that image. And like th they say, like if they if things if neurons in your brain fire together, they wire together. That's like a really <laughs> strong principle within neuropsychology. So the more you're recalling that person in the same sort of context with the same sort of image, um, the more you're going to like reinforce those pathways in your brain and the more likely that that's going to be the image that you involuntarily recall when it happens again. So mm -hmm. I wouldn't say that it says anything specifically about your psychology. It just says it's it just tells me that you encoded the visual memory near like a, a bunch of nodes that are easily accessible. And that's the that's the one that's most readily recallable. And that when you do so, it frequently takes like it frequently takes place that you're recalling that memory in that regard. Um, so your brain lays down the groundwork to, you know, that one rises to the top first. It's already really well established. Jennifer Aniston Neuron is a good book to read about that. It's called The Forgetting Machine is actually the name of the book. It's a really good book. It's called The Forgetting Machine, and it's about like the Jennifer Aniston Neuron is like the sub uh, title of that book, but it, it talks a lot about like how we form memories and how we forget things and the overlap between the two. So if you're interested in that type of thing, that's a good book to to go read. It's an e that one's a fairly easy read. It's pretty quick. So this is just a book recommendation show when Forrest and I get right. on. It's, a, it's just nope. we'd too like many. to see these books. <laughs> yeah. Too many books. Too many books. Uh, $50 from a fuzzy potato. This was a great show. And this duo is fantastic. Shannon, I'd love to hear your arguments for bodily autonomy. Or I love to hear your arguments for bodily autonomy. And yeah, and you know, basic human rights, slay girl slay. <laughs> Forrest, your lectures are wonderful and engaging. I learn something new every time. Thank you Aww, so much. We really appreciate that. I wanted to be back here when you were going off about that. Just, just... Snapping. Slay girl. Slay. So good. Oh, slay girl. Uh, twenty dollars. Twenty alleged dollars from Lucas. Both Shannon and Forrest. Do you think it is possible to explain complex notions through TikTok? Uh, a and then B. If Neil deGrasse Tyson was president of the world, would you accept to be in his ministry? You are both wonderful. Um, ministry I, I being used in the political okay. sense. Not in the religious sense. Right. I think. Oh, like his minister of science, <laughs> right? In the world right. government, in the one world I, government. I wouldn't accept. I wouldn't accept a position in any like ministry of science that would have someone like me as a minister of science. I'm not that great of a scientist to do that. <laughs> but uh, it's not I'm about if you're people. great. It's is everyone else worse? That's the position uh -huh. you got to figure out. They're not. There are so many smarter people than me that are way better biologists than me that would be able to do those things. I'm just a guy who learns things and yells about them on the internet for money. That's not not that great. So no to the second question. Uh, to the first question, uh, there actually is a lot to go on there. The problem is that like actual higher education, I can talk about this for five hours, actual higher education Seven more seconds. is way, right, is a lot to deal with and isn't always productive teaching on TikTok or something like that is great to get stuff out there, but there's no way to get all the nuance on a nuance that you need. And people expect you to take like a fucking five semesters of like dedicated context and put it into 60 seconds of TikTok is not going to work. So can we teach complex notions a little bit? Yes. But like you, you need to have like really good education and do it consistently. You know I think I mean? you're saying that TikTok is the hook and you are the hooker. Precisely. Precisely. Excellent. I am the hooker. Yes. Perfect. Love it. Shannon, did you want to take the question too? The first one, the answer would be yes, 
but you'd likely have to do a number of TikToks probably, depending on what the concept was. And the second one, um, maybe it would depend on what it was and if I thought that I would be effective. Yeah, so there you go. Tweet $20 yep. from Real Dollars from Gary Booker. Hi, Forrest. Let's get Gut Sick Gibbon on this show with you. <gasps> you guys will be amazing. I yeah. love Erica. Erica. Yeah, Erica's oh. fucking a rock star, dude. She's so cool. She helped me a lot with the, uh, I did a video over the evolution of smiling. She helped me out on that one. Um, she helped me put together, somebody else was working on a presentation over Psychoanthropus, and she was able to give me a lot more context than what I had. She's really cool. Um, so like, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll text her and ask if she ever wants to do something like this. Cause like, I, I bet she would be interested. She, you know, her channel deserves to be way bigger than it is. Could oh, be great for yeah, hostility I've as had well. Her on my show. Yeah. Like, I, would, way... I would love to have her on my show. You yeah, had her on your show so, as well? Yeah, like ages ago. Like ages ago, I had yeah. her on my channel. Because I, mm. I I, saw her first time she debated Kent Hovind, and I was like, who the fuck is this girl? She mm. just Yeah, she's it. on fire. Dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, so... Yeah, I've actually... I hate that guy. I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got a meeting with her in a couple of weeks anyway, so I'll bring it up. We'll see if we can like sit down and figure something out, because cool. I don't want to put her on the spot here. So she, she's so cool. Yeah. And I, I love talking to her, because it's so <laughs> awesome to... He like, it's so awesome to talk to somebody who is so very clearly so much smarter than me, and just blows me out of the water. Like, she's awesome. <laughs> so cool. She's a genius, for sure. Uh, ten dollars from Jamnik06. Jimmy, you're still my favorite producer. Well, that's sweet. Uh, you aren't watching many good shows then. Five dollars. I'm just kidding. I think five dollars from VV. Oh man, I missed the Collins. Well, anyway, hashtag Team Forest. What we are learning on this channel, uh, based on how our Sunday programming is taken off, and then even how I, really how all the shows are doing. If you want to be sure you're going to get on, call early. Our first calls queued up 40 minutes before the show started this week. We had two people at 40 yeah. minutes prior. So uh, you're going to want to call early. Otherwise, you got to play the game of as a call hangs up, see if you can fill the slot that they open. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was nice to see, especially for a new show. Like oh, yeah. first ever one. I was like, oh man, I wonder if we'll get calls. And as soon as I logged in, I was like, shit, we've got calls. As it's of a cool. month ago or so, the Sunday show is now mostly theist calls, and that has been the Ooh. best. Yeah. That's awesome. Very cool. Uh Moyet Morgan for five dollars says Christians should quit saying sin begin at Eden when the devil got kicked before that. I think I get That's the interesting. Point. Yeah. Um yeah. Kathleen Moncrift for 20 alleged dollars. I'm late, but I'm so excited to go back and watch. It was a good show. It was pretty, there was Absolutely. a good like cross-reference of calling caller types too. It was great. I think I'd also like to make My some buddy. some skept talk nerch, which says this shirt cost 20 alleged dollars. <laughs> <I'm enjoying> <laughs> <it>. <laughs> A friend of mine texted me and said uh, about this show. He said, uh, yeah, I, I decided I'd tune in and just listen for 10 minutes. Two hours ago. Stop <laughs> enchanting me with this, your knowledge, you time-sucking science race. Uh, that, awesome. that warms my heart. Uh, $10 from Sarah Die. Oh, my goodness, Forrest. Be still my heart. Someone else knows who Mitch Hedberg is. I love his stand-up rip, Mitch. Mitch was instrumental to me when I was a kid. He was, I loved his stuff so much. I, I incorporated so much of his humor and his style in the way that I teach and the way that he's a fucking awesome person, man. I loved him. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I can see his pun work being very appealing to you. That's right up your alley. Absolutely. No. The, the way that he just played with phrase. Oh, it was and so I loved good. the way he would deliver it and how he would <laughs> sort of talk with this kind of sound. And he would be like, like, he, was, like he was just so stoked. They offered me a fresh bag of M&M's. They said it had never been open. I said, wow, how did they get the M&M's in there? That's <laughs> <laughs> right. I, I couldn't, it, you could never tell if he was really high, really excited, or really nervous. And it was probably all three. Oh, you know what I mean? yeah, yeah. As, yeah. I used to do drugs. I still do, but I used to too. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I also used to, yeah. <laughs> uh, five dollars from quagma tv what's your favorite crazy hoax spooky thing urban legend or cryptid i'm a fan of the oklahoma octopus or tree octopus i like narwhals because those aren't real <laughs> prove they're real i dare you to prove they're real find me a narwhal that i can go look oh they don't survive in captivity convenient 
Wow. <laughs> Unicorn Man. whales my ass. I fucking love Mothman, dude. Mothman was my favorite when I was a kid. I watched that dumbass movie, The Mothman Prophecies, where all the people die and and all that stuff. And uh, I thought that was so cool. And I was in element. I was in like third grade, and I started going to art class, drawing spooky shadow figures and writing ninety nine people will die on every piece of paper that I did. I got some looks from some teachers. It was cool. <laughs> <laughs> you got one, Shannon. Mm, I've, I, I like Loch Ness because I always, I've always wanted to go there to Scotland mm. and just like see all of the lore around it. So I don't have an exciting or esoteric one. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Uh, uh, with Australia not being real, if it's not, they wouldn't be alleged dollars. Five imaginary dollars from Dave Cowdery. <laughs> I'm living proof the brain repurposes. When I was born, the doctors did not think I would walk or talk. Turns out as close to normal as anyone else. Happens That's wicked. Yeah. People, there, there's kids who have like severe like damage or infection in their brain and they have a complete like hemispherectomy. They take out half mm -hmm. of their entire brain and you'd never know they live totally normal lives. It, it's an astounding. It's why people are freaking like when people talk about, oh, I have a bigger brain. It's a fun colloquialism, but like you have to talk about significant developmental differences with new like cortices being developed. Like when we talk about human evolution, it's not just brain size, it's what these things are able to do that's important. You know what I mean? Like the brain is a freaking fascinating organ. So many opportunities, so many cool things you can do. True. Ten dollars from Kev Kenneth Westrom. Thank you so much for the show. I wish I could listen to you to talk about science and philosophy all day, every day. I've tried. Oh. They insist on living lives. That's the worst. We're the worst. But that's we what showed makes up you today. The best. <laughs> I love the today. two of you so much. Ten dollars <laughs> from Zenful Pariah. I can't let this go. To reiterate my question: Does radiation have as severe of an impact? on allele shifts as it seems when looking at the most unchanged state of all things with reflective outer layers or reflective. I don't know if that's maybe not a typo and I'm saying it wrong. Tweet length. Oh, is this the, talk about the, the exoderms and things like that? Like the, so, uh, so radiation <laughs> does cause mutation, but it's not even close to the only source of mutation. Um, you know, there's copying errors, man. And, and like, not to mention the fact that like, even if you had the exact same DNA, you could have you know uh, uh, epigenetic changes that still cause phenotypic change. And remember, evolution acts on phenotype, not just so. Like there's like yeah, you could have things that have reflective outer layers that prevent radiation. Sure, there there's there's you know even things that you know that's that's what melanin is all about. There's even things that turn that on its head. There's a species of fungus that like eats radiation. It has a special type of melanin that it uses to absorb electromagnetic radiation in radioactive areas like around nuclear power plants. And it actually uses that as a form of energy to do not really photosynthesis, but something similar to it. So like the, the, these reflective outer layers and protective outer layers, they don't prevent mutation and they don't prevent evolution. They can actually be a functional part of what's going on there. Um, and even with, with that being a complete barrier to all ionizing radiation, you're still going to have mutation. You're still going to have selection pressures acting on those mutations. So um, yeah, no, that it, it's a fascinating thing to think about, but I, I think that there's still definitely a huge amount of possibility. Oh, this one was supposed to go to the queue, not go up yet. That's the most recent one. Okay. Uh, uh, $10 from Danny in Asheville. Congrats on the line starting a new show. Going to be great on Mondays. Thank you very much. Yay. I love this show so far very, very much. $10 from Synth Addict. Here's to more strong science content. Love it, Forrest. Thanks, Forrest. Thank and so Shannon. Much. Shannon's, oh, Shannon's I'm also, also awesome. here. That's... And my favorite. I'm not, I shouldn't play favorites, but here we are. <laughs> $5 from J83CAD. Love well, listening to you terrible. both. <laughs> Love listening <laughs> to you both. Thoughts on beliefs related to fraud slash corruption in finance and or government. There's a lot I didn't know and can't prove, but uh, I don't see a follow-up to that message. Did you try to do your first half in super chat and your second half in regular chat? Because I don't keep track of that and it failed if that was your goal. Maybe it was like, but dot 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 as in but oh. you know, he feels like there's something there. Right, right. Like, I, I don't, don't really, I, yeah. I can't prove Nothing it. I can't but, prove, but seems yeah. suspicious. Right. Yeah. That sort of yeah. That sort of but. As far as yeah. 
thoughts on fraud or corruption in government? Yes. Yep. Yes, it, it is. is. <laughs> Very much so. Here, is... here in America, we have this thing called lobbying where you can just pay a legislator to believe whatever you want and vote whatever you want. That in biology is called corruption. And so like, it's yeah, it's a thing that we have here that's totally legal and totally fucked up. Your PAC this, system seems like a money laundering scam too. Oh, it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This, like, this is one of those real. This is one of those tricky questions we, where it's like, what is your motivation for asking? Are are you asking for like the normal? Is there a shadow government? Uh, is, are people running things, or are you trying to <laughs> see if really one of the guests are going to go full that. Kanye right now? Because that's usually right. what you expect on YouTube out of a conspiracy question like this. <laughs> Yeah, the thing is, like I always say, you know, don't don't chalk anything up to conspiracy that can be easily pr explained through stupidity. And like <laughs> the thing is, yeah. like here you actually see a little bit of both. You see a, a system where our mm -hmm. legislators are allowed to trade stocks and then pass laws that affect the value of those stocks. Right. And that's okay. No, What's that not. all about? You know, it's, uh... it's not. Uh, only four left. Uh, Jeffrey Ulrich says, Forrest, Mark's only got one thing wrong, the idea that people could evolve out of self-interest. Hence, market with regulation. Discuss vine length. Six seconds. Uh, that, <laughs> that's, a, that's a Malthusian myth there, my boy. That's the idea that humans are inherently selfish and will only do things to get money and, and profit and all that stuff. As disproven by several indigenous societies all over the world, uh, you can look up early writings of like Jesuit explorers here in the Americas and how they talk about the, you know, anarchist societies that lived here and they're like it's insane these these people their leaders tell them to do things and they only do it if they want to and they still have a society and it's crazy a uh, really good book on that it'll challenge your assumptions um the dawn of everything a new history of humanity by the davids here uh, these are two anthropologists and this is just an anarchist take on uh, a lot of human history early human history the first several chapters are specifically talking about Malthus and, and Rousseau and Hobbes and American society and indigenous cultures and the indigenous critique of Western capitalism, which I could go on about for a long time. <laughs> Ten dollars from Terry Sketcher. Well, I on, went on Twitter. <laughs> Ten dollars on current uh, uh, from Terry Sketcher on current evidence. Do you think that long COVID is mostly a psychological phenomenon? No, very no. Dope. Hard no. There's no evidence for that at all. Oh, I love significant the Canadian phrase. Hard no. Yeah. Is that hard a Canadian no. phrase? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and I've been using you it like crazy because of... Not the way you all say... Yeah, not really, but Letter Kenny is what I think has brought it to the States. Hard no. That's a Texas 10. Yeah. That's a Texas size 10 Texas 4. Good size buddy. 10 4, buddy. That's right. Uh, $10 from Avery. Jimmy is my favorite full-time producer on the line. Thank you. Me too. <laughs> I appreciate Tom that. Three. He's a favorite person of mine who's currently producing this show. Killing <laughs> uh, it. Uh, $10 from a fuzzy potato. While these comments ain't slaying, what's the most annoying question you consistently receive? Oh. Will you make the uh, show a podcast without us supporting it financially first? You why all don't is, understand. Why do you use such big words? Why do you use such big words? I'm like, because I know them. And it's the words for <laughs> those things. things. And they're contextually accurate for, what, what? for the point that I'm trying to yeah. convey. What do you want Why her to say instead of hippocampus? Words? Like, what's, right. what's, what's the stand-in word? <laughs> it gets, for all me, it's the why are there still monkeys? That's, that's the worst one. Oh. Why are there still monkeys? Why didn't all the monkeys evolve into humans? Oh, my God. People ask you that in earnest, like on a relatively consistent basis, because I'm so sorry. That in the, during the show, last time, yeah. in the chat during the show, All someone the asked, why haven't humans, wow. why don't humans evolve into lizards in the chat yeah. at oh, the beginning dear, of the show? Oh, yeah. dear, Somebody, they should call in if they have these questions. questions. Yeah, That's what should. I'm here for. Nathan Duclos, can we get Shannon to say Canadian Looney Tooney? Hashtag Canadian sorry, not sorry. I need a new ringtone for my phone. Canadian Looney Tooney. Hashtag Canadian sorry, not sorry. Is, is I think that, that might that be it? disappointed. <laughs> I, you say sorry. That's interesting that you say sorry, not Canadian sorry. Canadian Looney Tooney. Canadian sorry, that not sorry. Sorry. You went both. Sorry. You said sorry, not, not sorry. Not sorry. That was interesting. Why both? That was great. I don't know. I the don't Looney think about it. I Tooney definitely it. had that. 
that that little bit of lilt to it, a little bit of extra, you know, excitement. The Looney Tooney there. Yeah. Is Don't that forget. what you think Canadians tell? Yeah, that was some, like that was almost Irish, with a, like with a D. That was like an <laughs> Irish person who moved to Minnesota. <laughs> that Looney Tooney there. <laughs> oh, we're all oh, yeah. to get our Looney Toonies oh, no, there, there, guys. Oh, you got your Looney Toonie there, yeah. Hey oh, there, boys. Sorry. Well, top of rough. the morning to your Looney Toonies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, y'all can close it out. Just don't forget to thank the mods and the screeners and all the other people that help and volunteer. And then I'm just going to shut up now. Hey, thank that. you mods and screeners and all the other people that volunteer for the past three yeah. and a half days that this show has been on both times. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been really fantastic. <laughs> oh. We we were both like we got to be out of here in like maybe two hours tops. It's oh my glob, dude. We're an hour over even when I was like I can stay this long. Um, <laughs> God, it's, it's been a radical it. show. I've got to go do great. homework after this. Um, it's been fantastic. Lord. Thanks everybody who called in. Everybody who wanted to call in but didn't get a chance to call in next week. When we have other shows or wait until one of us is back on and call us and and, and harass us with your questions. Uh, and if you're in the chat, one of the people that I saw several of you talking about how evolution makes no sense, call in. Call, ask me questions. Well, that's what I'm here for. If you have questions, do it. Uh, uh, we're, we're so happy to have you here, and we're so happy to all the people watching. I don't know what our total view count was, but thank you, every single one of you, for tuning in and making this early launch of this show something really spectacular and fantastic. Shannon, yeah. do you have anything before we wrap up? I just feel it's super special to me that this is a brand new show on a Monday night and all of the, like we had at some, at one point in time, I think we had like 1600 live viewers, which is banana bonkers for a brand new show. Like that's wild. it's crazy. That's and wild. like the queues to be full. Thank you so much for supporting this new endeavor. Keep supporting the show when the other hosts are on as well. They're, Super cool. You will love RN next week. And tune in tomorrow and watch whatever it is that Jimmy said he was doing. I wasn't listening. Something. Yeah. <laughs> Sex coach. Sex coach. Alyssa <laughs> Lewis check. Sex coach tomorrow. Especially support this show, though, when we're on it. Especially mostly support this it when show. we're here. We're in a bit yeah, of a yeah. competition. And mostly with us. And we're going to win. Just, just make sure. Make, give give our... The oh, best. fuck. The bars went up again. Oh, shit. <laughs> we need also, new technology. happy pride. <laughs> Yeah, dude. <laughs> we're nailing yeah, it give you us give us the most views shannon and i and, <laughs> and help me buy a new everything please oh man <laughs> things are going so wrong at the end uh, i hey, don't know when to hit the outro button elevate the discourse you, you, you hit, bye have, 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 never stop learning goodbye <laughs> <laughs>